What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Batman in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every theatrically released Batman movie. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Things change. The Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. I'm licking the microphone. Is what you mean. Uh, the cat the big dog, yeah, like Kevin Coelho. What happened to Vicky? And the producer <laughs> slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Mistletoe can be deadly, Greg, if you eat it. <laughs> daddy, daddy, a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. Uh, <laughs> uh, how far would we scene. go if we were in the office right now? Uh, we would be, <laughs> how we would how far scene. would we go is a question I never want Greg Miller to ask. Ever. All the ever. way. Just like my Chinese tailor once said, all the way. All the way. All the way. Yes, that is true. That is <laughs> Very bizarre, but true. That's a uh, good pull from Game Over Greg <laughs> Show episode five. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Kind of Funny's In Review, where every week we take two different franchises and rank and review them. Uh, starting this week, we're doing Batman on Mondays. And on Thursdays, we are doing The Conjuring. Yeah. Cinematic Universe In Review. Very exciting stuff. Episode one of that debuts on Thursday. You can watch live uh for batman on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games you watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny uh you can also listen to it as a podcast or search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny reviews if you want to get the show ad free you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our patreon producers guys you want to take a guess momo and al momo and al man muhammad and muhammad and al tribesman jeff bezos didn't make the cut this month maybe Fucking next month. cowardly bitch you yeah. know what i mean Damn. he's been saying it for years he'd support us on patreon and he keeps flaking on it mm-hmm. there's probably mm-hmm. like a button that jeff bezos could hit that just kills all of us yeah Damn. you know what i mean like he's got that power now That's where he money. could probably assassinate all of us uh, Tell nick people i'm an, it and it's i'm an amazon prime member so i don't think he should turn on his audience like that and remember I mean, if you have amazon good. prime people you have twitch gaming prime whatever they call it now prime it gives game. you a free 30 day subscription <laughs> use it on us kind of funny games how are you <sighs> it's all true today we're talking about batman returns released on june 19 1992 directed once again by tim burton music by Danny Elfman, a budget of $80 million, which is over double the last movie, which was that, $35 million. It's so weird because you watch this movie. I, 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 I'll be honest. I've never watched the 89 and then immediately watched Batman Returns. But am I crazy and feeling like the 89 just feels like a bigger movie than this? You're crazy. Really? <laughs> the, I don't know. Yeah, why. the zoo I don't know. alone. Well, What's but, that? Like, it didn't look well, good. No, the zoo was great, but they kept coming back. Like they got a lot of use out of that like Gotham Square with the steps and the oh, sure. two yeah, yeah. Like, Christmas tree. Every third scene, we just <laughs> keep cutting back to that, and I was like, "What? Why if wouldn't it, they use like some other practical locations?" I guess I'm right there with fifty percent of the Warner Brothers lot was taken up with Gotham Gotham City sets. I'm with you, Nick. Of it feels different. I've never watched them back to back like this, and that was the thing. You know, as a, a not a, a, a regular old you know movie expert or anything. Watching this one right off the back of 89, I was trying to figure out why I was surprised that this one, I like Batman Returns, obviously, I, I, but I, I, this one wasn't playing as well for me on the heels of Batman 89. Mm-hmm. And part of it, the, the only thing I could come up with was that for the limitations they had in 89, it made it feel like it was its own world. Yeah. Whereas this very much felt like trying to pull 89 into the real world, if that makes sense. Not Not in terms of like, hey, here's like real world ramifications, but in terms of the way it looked and the way it was shot, it didn't feel like as stylized and yeah. well, unique as 89 did. They changed production designers because I think um, mm-hmm. I think Bob Ring, well, not Bob Ring, well, whoever was the production designer for 89 wasn't available for this. So they changed it and they changed the aesthetic a little bit of Gotham yeah. and, Gotham, and they made it way less, um, I think way less grimy and way less colorful. And I, and I always thought when I was a kid, I was like, that's not as fun. Now, now looking back, I kind of appreciate some of those choices, specifically the ones with color, where we only really ever see color in certain specific instances like Catwoman's lips or things like that. But um, this movie just felt like it, it just to me felt like we kept coming back to the same four or five sets. And it wasn't I don't know. It's very weird. And I think one of the reasons why this doesn't work for me as well as the 89 is because 89 Batman to me, a large part of the 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 power of that movie was about the spectacle. It was about seeing Batman on screen for the first time in this iteration, in the black costume, and treating it a little less campy than, or way less campy than the 66. This one doesn't, for me, do anything 
more than that as far as character development is concerned. And so I think when you watch Batman Returns, you kind of feel like you're watching a rehashing of the 89 Batman with just a slightly better suit that has a thinner cowl in it. Um, well, a big part of this one, I think, for me, that, you know, again, stacking them up toe by toe to toe is something I have, of course, heard adults say many times about Batman Returns, but I hadn't re realized coming off of 89 like this, of course, being a child watching all these, is that this really doesn't even feel like a Batman movie in a lot of ways. Like, we get so little Batman. But 89 Batman is great because, hey, look, and, and granted, love it or hate it, Michael Keaton's interpretation of the bat of Batman, right. I do feel is unique and interesting. And he is this twisted fucking weirdo that lives in the thing. And here, like, we don't really get that, right? We get the one date with Selena that feels almost like a carbon copy of Vicky's. It doesn't go in the same direction, which is, I think, maybe why they do it, to play with it, to show what the relationship, yeah. they're different stuff. But even then, that's the only time I feel like we really get in his head this time. Whereas I Not feel like we had multiple of those. Not a whole lot of Alfred in this one, huh? Uh, he pretty Alfred. much opens the film after, you know, when we get back to present day Gotham. I, so I, I will say that, though, uh, compared Close to the 89, I feel like 89 really overachieved in what it was trying to do. And this movie severely underachieved. What, um, like, I I don't know what kind of. In my in my head going into this movie, I thought this movie was going to be a lot less campy and a lot less cheesy. Um I thought this was like the darkest fucking movie ever <laughs> watching it as a kid, like watching it as a kid. I just had the images of the that weird like cat statue, whatever the fuck that thing is. And then penguins, gross ass black ink mouth bullshit. Yeah, like that's all I had memories of as a kid going into this, watching it last night. Um, man, like the that cheesy fucking fight scene in the street with the with the ghouls or with the, with the gang the of people gang. and he like the red batarang 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 and it like follows the battery i was like this is yeah. the, this is awful like it's, I, it's, I don't so like a lot of this it's weird because some of the movie feels way darker than the first one and then some of it feels way campier than the first one so it's like i always remember this one being like oh this is the darker of all of the movies and obviously um i think a lot of audiences when this movie first came out agreed as did a lot of the executives at warner brothers because surprise surprise tim burton didn't get invited back for the next one and instead they went in a completely different direction, which was like neon camp, uh, which we'll get into when we watch Batman Forever. But this to me, like watching it again, I'm like, whoa, Andy, you're spot on. That moment where he, th where he throws the battering, it's so cheesy and the so dog poorly grabs done. It. <laughs> but yeah. then you have another <laughs> moment where like Brutal. he's got he's gone and collected all of the babies and the firstborns from all around and they're in cages and he's going to drown them in a vat of like toxic acid but and like then ends up dying with just black shit coming out of his mouth. And it's horrifying. I feel like both those things that you called out, like the 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 battering, and and like I'm agreeing with what you're saying, where it's like the fact that you know he looks at it and presses the button and puts on four icons for oh like there's four people. <laughs> this is know? exactly yeah. where they are. It's yeah. so dumb and like childish. And then the cut of the dog jumping, like. The battering is clearly at like face level to the woman. Right. And then the dog jumps. Dog jumps to mid shin. Yeah. And it just has it. And she's just like, hmm. And it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, that's like dumbly What's the made. direction? And, and What's the like, direction here? Yeah. It's one of those things that like takes you out of the moment when you're like, oh, okay. I guess like a, a bit of levity is what they wanted there. Like and I then, expected, I expected Bruce Wayne to look at the camera and go, like, ah, oh, yeah. you silly yeah. thought. Like, it was just weird. And then the, with his stupid ass duck lips. Fucking Michael Keaton, guys. I think hey, you man. Guys are, you're oh, insane. That's how he was born. Oh, bro, chill. Wait, hold on. No, I wasn't he was done. born. I wasn't yeah. done. Uh, so the, uh, and then we have the scene with the train, which is also like a fucked up scene where it's like, oh, they're all getting kidnapped. But the solution is Batman just comes in in two seconds, fixes the problem, and it's done. Dude. That's this movie you to know? a T. I remember I coming back and watching it again and again for in review because I think last Christmas me and Jen might have put it on. It's one of those. It's a Batman and Return. Batman Returns. I feel like is a classic in the background movie. You're on. It's on TBS. You throw it up and you're you're only half paying attention, if that even. Like watching this and like, oh yeah, like you know, like all right, cool. They frame Batman for murdering the Ice Princess. The Batmobile's driven around the streets and like almost killed all these people and killed some people for sure. It's yeah. done all these things and it's like, man can't wait to see how oh it's just the next scene the next scene is cobblepot giving a speech batman plays the cd and that's over with we're on to the next thing he's kidnapped these kids he's got them in cages all right the next scene is that being or not that exact actually the same scene where that is happening is where it gets foiled by batman dropping down like yeah oh, I mean, you, you expect when you're kidnapping like all of these kids to see them like dangling over the vat of toxic acid and then batman having to like make the choice between that or catwoman or whatever but no yeah he just does that also Oswald Cobble or Cobble Penguin, the things he said, yes, while damning to his political career, doesn't necessarily let Batman off the hook for like sure. rampaging around the city and the and the doesn't. and like 
I don't think Ruby he just any point was like, I killed the Ice Queen, not Batman. I think people were like, did Batman suck? I don't know. It's very really <laughs> murky. <laughs> Batman yeah. probably had a Gotham Gazette article after this where he gave some, <laughs> he dropped some stuff, on, knowledge on them about what really happened. Like, oh, it makes sense. That's how it happened. I imagine so, so. It had a box office of two hundred eighty-two point eight million, uh, which was less than the four hundred eleven million that uh, Batman eighty-nine had. But it still led it to being the third highest-grossing movie in America in nineteen ninety-two and the sixth highest-grossing worldwide uh, ever total at that I, point. Yeah, um, I, I, I feel like that's indicative of though, like sequels of that time for for movies, like tr- historically didn't do as well. I think as the original movie, I don't think it was until Marvel figured out the formula and then Fast and Furious figured out the formula. Where like, oh, subsequent sequels are all going to like outdo the one prior to it. Um, yeah, but yeah, that that, that well, I remember that being slightly disappointing for people when it came out. A runtime of two hours and six minutes, which is exactly the same as Batman eighty nine which is kind of interesting. Uh, the film was nominated for two Academy Awards, Best Visual Effects and Best Makeup. Uh, man, this is such a weird one for me where I do not agree with you guys at all. And I think that this one is so much better than the first one. Having said that, last week I compared the first one to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And I think this is very comparable to Spider-Man 2, where it's like, yeah, it is, it is much, much better. And I think a lot of it has to do with it actually committing to its tone and style, which for this one is extremely dark, Tim Burton this with a lot of camp and they don't shy away from it. They don't try to pretend it's not campy. It is campy. Yeah. Mm. And the first one, I feel like kind of didn't commit to the camp. And so when Prince was playing and the Joker and his goons were doing stuff, it always just felt weird and off putting. Uh, and Michael Keaton as Batman just is bizarre and doesn't work for me ever. And I think with this movie, it's like it builds on that world in a way that like we're, we're, we have to build off that foundation so we have what we have. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you add Catwoman and, and Penguin, I thought they were a lot more interesting than Joker was in 89. And I thought the fight scenes were a lot better and more fun to watch because like, it actually felt like Batman was moving around in a way, not just fumbling around and falling, which well, was nice. That, it, it's interesting. it is interesting because I think that you looking at the costumes, and again, never watched them back to back, that costume is so much lighter on him looking. And the cowl itself is so much thinner that he could actually – like move his head a little bit yeah. and, and so, he doesn't look like he's a bobblehead running down the street with his giant cow and these mm-hmm. tiny little legs. Oh, I got a whole bunch of facts about the costume that I put together here. The Batman costume weighed 55 pounds. Uh, several modifications were made to the bat suit, including the color scheme and chest plate at the request of Keaton. A zipper was also added to the pants. Batman doesn't wear boots in the movie. They're Air Jordan sixes. Yeah, they are I oh, connected oh to God. an upper, uh, which gives them like a boot like look, but yeah, they're actual Jordans, So you can move around a bit more, which is, Cool. But yeah, man, like this, this movie is, it's so freaking bizarre to me that it exists. And I think that this, this Batman world, this Tim Burton Batman world is so weird that in the first movie, it's kind of like set up that it's his first real public appearance as Batman. And then this movie is called Batman Returns, but it doesn't really feel like he's returning at all. No, it doesn't feel like like he went away. This feels more like when Batman would walk around the city in the 66 Batman. And it's like, hey, Batman, how you doing, man? Did you get that package I sent you? Because he literally just walks in and Gordon's like, hey, Batman, so this is what we got going on here. And he just talks to them like he would. Looks like the circus game's back in town. We'll see. Yeah, well, and but nobody makes any effort to like arrest him at all. He's just it's just accepted that Batman is here. And I always you thought know, that was kind of weird. Why would they arrest that, him at the well, end? They, no. He gave the signal. They knew, you know. Yeah, they That's were true. friends at the end of the last one. Um, but what I do want to point out is I, I've always thought and I still think that the standout performance in this is Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. I think that you like, don't think it's DeVito. I think DeVito is great. It's I think and, and I do love the fact that I think Tim Burton on this one was trying to go a little deeper with the characters and trying, you know, famously, he, you know, like you said last week, Tim, he wasn't too big of a fan of what is what the 89 Batman ended up being. So I think partially he took this movie to sort of fix some of those issues he saw in the original film. Um, and one of them, I think, is really kind of nailing some of the darker motivations for Penguin. And when it starts off, like you get a sense of why Penguin would be a little pissed off because his parents floated him down the river like Moses, for Christ's sake. Right. Like they mm-hmm. um, yeah. they, they they basically threw him out and shout out to Pee Wee Herman or Paul Rubens for for being the um, the, the dad. dad. There, which is clear. <laughs> oh, my God. That actually was him. Yeah, yeah it was Paul That's Rubens so because they know each other from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That oh, Burton. my God. Yeah. I can't wait to tell Joey and Gia. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's him. We were saying I, like, dude, that hella looks like him. I, oh, yeah, look at the Jordans. Yeah. yeah, I pulled up the yeah. Jordans. Six is baby. <laughs> That's crazy. Funny. But you know, but I also I just I do love that. And I think when I was a kid and, and even now, I just I'm so drawn to that duality of the relationship between Catwoman and Batman and how how they do have those moments where they're like they're fighting, but they understand each other and they respect each other and they're attracted to each other because of that, because they are kindred spirits, even though she's sort of 
her motivations are leading her down a much darker path than his. And I love that scene. And I, even though I made fun of it earlier today with Greg, but I love that scene in the ballroom where they're the only ones not wearing masks and everyone else is dressed yeah. up as masks. And they have that moment where they realize who each other is or who each other How are. How on the nose is all of that stuff though. And oh, again, totally. it goes totally. into what this movie is, which is campy and, and like, <laughs> there's no subtlety, but yeah, them not wearing masks is like, Come on. And then they need to back it all up with the dialogue over and over and over and have well, like, I mean, these weird reveals. Like, yeah. what bothers me is this Batman is so fucking stupid. Bruce Wayne is stupid. <laughs> like, we're here in the audience being told all this stuff. He's not figuring anything out. Like, the moment he doesn't he figure had a out. Feeling, he had a feeling about Penguin. He had a feeling. He had <laughs> okay. He did. Even Alfred's anything. like, why do you care so much about this new guy? Are you worried about being usurped? And like, but, no, but Alfred, I, he's a weird Penguin person I, that came up from the zoo. I think he's got ulterior <laughs> motives. I did like that one little moment of sincerity where he's like, huh, I hope he does find his parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I know. There, there's that moment. And then there's another just, again, I think we, uh, I forget. Oh, it was the, it was similar to the moment where um, in the first one, it was like, you weigh a little bit more than 108 pounds. There's the moment where he flicks the button and he goes, huh, I didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you get like ter- terrifying. Yeah, that's the going, thing about it where I think in this one, again, I think, uh, and granted, it's getting into the character and doing stuff. This one, I feel like Michael Keaton's performance is way more Michael Keaton. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that sounds weird or stupid, but like, I feel like at least in 89, he was this more like, tortured batman or whatever this bruce wayne who is more in between and again i don't think he nails like being the dark knight and being this professional fighter or any of the crap we know batman to be right but i thought that worked whereas this one again yeah the flipping the switches some of the stuff he's reacting and back to tim's point of yeah he doesn't like at least in batman 89 like right he cracks the code in terms with with alfred of like how attacked. joker's uh his stuff Kevin is working Hall, yeah. and saves the city yeah. right like in this one yeah he, he can't really put mo- anything together <laughs> Yeah, but even then, even in 89, there's that scene where he's at the city hall or whatever at the stairs, and he's just like looking around as like these mimes are attacking, and it's like, what 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 could be happening here? It's well, just no, so again, fucking bizarre, I think you misinterpreted man. that scene. The scene was that he saw the person he had killed as Batman and was like in shock that the person was back. Like he saw Jack Napier and was like, What the fuck is going on? Bruce Wayne and shouldn't was, be in shock. <laughs> he should deal with things, handle things. Like it's he's just a boss, such a dude. bizarre. He knew joke. he wasn't gonna get shot. He's wearing the fucking shoulder pads. We already went over that. Andy, what was the <laughs> safety mechanism? All you needed when you left the house in the eighties was what? Exactly. Well, well hold, first pads. off, you would use the shoulder, shoulder plant. That's that's the number one thing, uh, number one uh, way to be safe in the eighties. To be safe from what, Nick? What are the five things? And quicksand. Quicksand. And children. (laughs) Quicksand, yeah. And baby boomers. If those kids try to climb up on you, they would get to that like cliff that went upside down and just you know they'd fall off. Just like castles. Just like castles. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Thank you, Kevin. Exactly. That's why we keep you around. We love you. Plot time. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Gotham City. We'll say 30-some years before anything you know is fucking going on in Gotham City. And we're at the co- the Cobblepot residence, right? They're going to have a baby. This should be the most exciting day of their lives. But it's not because this wife's going to give birth to a butterball penguin, all right? It's got flippers for hands. Pee Wee Herman's its dad. I think Pee Wee already got caught jacking off in a theater at this point. Big yeah. big trouble. Damn. Big trouble in general for the Cobblepot family, start. right? It was a porn theater. Greg, it is you, very dark, right? Greg do you think that it the parents at, at any point <laughs> just made an important distinction to make? It's not like he walked right into a Broadway show and was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say musical theater. You yeah, know what I mean? He, was, he, he walked into hairspray and was like, who oh, wants a little bit of the Pee Wee? He wasn't watching <laughs> Big. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> um, Greg, do you think the parents of Cobblepot knew that when he grew up, he was going to look like a Thanksgiving turkey? Like just, just the way you know when you buy a Thanksgiving turkey, that's yeah. how Cobblepot kind of looked. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. Oh, right. I mean, I don't think turkey. they knew that exactly that that would be his final form kind of thing, but they <laughs> did know. At some point, if you're Pee Wee, you got to look at your wife and be like, "Did you have sex with a penguin? Yeah. Like, what led Ooh. to this? You know, I mean, like you, you look over at the mailman and he is a penguin, and you're like, aha. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There, you know there, there I mean? are a lot of questions about this whole thing. And like I I appreciate this movie because straight from the get-go, this whole villain origin story, it's like it's everything I need. It's stupid as shit, but it's like it sets it up. I love that we only see shadows and like bits and pieces of penguin for a long time in this movie. Sure, and it's, sure. it's a fun Tim Burton 80s movie style reveal. Like I like that stuff. Um him floating up and like being greeted by a bunch of penguins. What the fuck? But Did like, I love it, them. and especially yeah. where it ends <laughs> of penguins with rockets attached to it, mind yeah. control, and all the shit that is so vaguely explained. It's so fun. It's so stupid. Is but my explained? question to you guys is <laughs> explained yeah. at all. <laughs> No, that's, what, vaguely, that's what I mean. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just so like they just they're like, wait, like at one point I, I swear to God, this is the first time I that's watched it. this movie. 
This is the first time I watched this movie where I was like, wait, do they have some sort of mental implant in their brain that's allowing him to control them? Because I just thought he just was telling the penguins to march into Gotham Square. I think Square. that they were just really well trained because if you notice, yeah. not only they have little helmets, they've got like a little targeting thing that comes yeah. down. Oh, so yeah. they're making yeah. the decisions on who they're yeah. shooting. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they, they pop have a bird. A, I don't have a go. I do not have a clear shot of the target. Pop a bird. I am negative. I, I am obscure. <laughs> Kevin, I got to imagine that there's like a an FN two one eight seven sort of penguin that's like, nah, I can't. I yeah, can't. I won't like, do this. This, this is wrong. These people <laughs> fed us. We can't for. turn on them. They fed us at one point. <laughs> See, I, I, it was remote controlled though. Like, because then it, Batman, it was, send, it was sending a signal that was like, go here. And then the signal was like, mm. "Come back." There was that, also whatever. a signal for shoot because he. We could have, yeah. We get it. There could be different reads on how deep <laughs> the penguin control went. <laughs> but my question to you guys is: by maybe two thirds through this movie, we're looking at Penguin, and I'm like trying to figure out his outfit. And I'm not talking about his fancy get up and all that stuff. I'm he's, talking about just like his long basic jumps. outfit, long johns. That, he, yeah. that he's in this like long john looking thing that looks very like a baby onesie. Is this the same baby onesie that no. he was left in? And he's no. just grown no. with him no. over time. No. That's not how the clothing works. No, I, don't one on I don't know. Gotham I don't know. I read a fact that says different. I, I do want to say, though, like, um, well, I'll get there when we get there. Okay, let's keep on with the plot. The penguin. So, freedom. yeah, again, they, they give birth to this fucking penguin, and they're like, this sucks. And so they put him in a cage because they see that he sucks, and he's got penguin flipper hands, and they're drinking martinis, which really look delicious. And then he eats the fucking cat. So, again, it's not that they gave birth. You know, a lot of people are all like, oh, woe is me. These people suck. You know, they're rich and they had a baby with some deformity. They should have loved it. They d That's not accurate. They gave birth to a literal monster. Like, I feel for these people. You know what I mean? I feel for Pee Wee both as this actor and when he jerked off in that Broadway show. You know what I mean? Like, these are things you should be allowed to do and <laughs> not have to deal with. You ever seen the movie? You show Wicked? You ever seen the Wicked? <laughs> well, I was Herman's whacking it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, though. They decide the only thing they can do is throw this baby in the goddamn river. You know what I mean? It's time to get rid of this thing. That's so a, they go that's out a for a jump, huh? Yeah, well, you know, they, I'm sure they tried other things. Things get left on the cutting room floor. They probably tried to burn it, and it just kind of get burned, you know? So they go out there, and they're running through the park, and they, they see another couple with – I like this part where they're running, and then they see a couple with a baby coming at them, and they start, and they walk like, oh, Merry Christmas. Then they run again, and they get to the thing, and they toss it over the side. It flows down through the credits, and like Tim said, there's penguins there. That, running, whatever, right? that wa running, walking, running scene – that yeah. was the first moment I was like, this is more campy than I remember it. Well, it's because the stroller clearly like didn't have any weight in it. So it was just getting pushed around. It's like, what the fuck, guys? But it, I will say this. There's there's a shot in the park, though, where we do see Gotham in the background. Yeah. And I do want to give a shout out to the production design. Gotham is a lot more like straight and unlike cold looking than it was dirty and gothic looking in the in the prior one but i think that again works against it in terms yeah. of building this world where I, I i i thought that you know it, love it or hate it the 89 gothic giant towering you know twelve thousand story buildings that were or all over it made it feel fantastical Maybe but re dirty. real whereas yeah. like this one feels like it's trying to become more gr not, and i know i'm using these words very loosely especially as we head towards the nolan trilogy but more grounded like this Almost looks like a Gotham you could exist in. So, like, I'd we're talking about the same set they use all the time at the tree, right? Like, outside of those two giant statues, that feels like a normal thing, completely unlike the Fugenheim when Vicky Vale walks in and it's like all steampunk and crap. I'd say that's the only thing about this movie that is trying to feel a little bit realistic. Yeah, I'm not, again, I'm not woman, at all talking about Yeah, A woman has nine lives and was brought back to life by cats yes. despite yes, yes, their yes, fingers. That's okay, that's I'm that talking about, the set. I'm talking about Gotham City. Yes. Like but that's, that's weird to me because like I, I don't get the real vibe at all. I get it's not the same gothic vibe that the 89 went for, but I think it's very much a we're going all Burton, man. Like this is much more a Tim Burton movie than the last one was yeah. where it's like I, I get the vibes of it being like more peewee than Edward Scissorhands. And I, I feel like, I guess, it, Scissorhands, I'd even put more towards the 89. Whereas, like, Pee Wee, the, like, weird, wacky, like, the zoo design itself, I love the scale of it and how massive and crazy it is. And then in the context of Gotham, like, I didn't get any real vibes at all, and I, I actually prefer the look of this one over 89. I I think that it's not necessarily a real versus not real. I think there's just a sterileness to this, to the design here that he went for that I think is then mirrored later. And I think he did Edward Scissorhands after this. I could be wrong, though. He might have done them in between. But, like, you see that same level of design where it's like when we go to the mansion on Edward Scissorhands, it's, like, kind of fucked up, gothic and decrepit. And then when we go to the suburbs, Everything it is like just, like, nice. rows and rows and rows of super clean, super perfect, like, identical, evenly matched, identical yeah. pastel-colored houses. And I, I love that. But in Edward Scissorhands, it works because of the juxtaposition of where Edward comes from. In this, it, I think 
I miss the steam. I'm with Greg where I do miss like I like the design of the buildings. I think they're stunning. And I think that the city itself is beautiful as when you're just looking at it. But once you're in it, it doesn't feel like there's a grime that, that necessitates a Batman to come help people from it. I, it just feels like there's one set of stairs and everyone else just lives around it. I feel like we lost that uh, the you know, the the office of the detective in the last one. Like that look of like that industrial design in like the space. It wasn't because like the city has that cool industrial look, but like also the like the individual offices kind of had or like the, you know, some of the shots in that also had that same feeling. And I feel like we lost that, although we get I, yeah, I think ahead, that they did a really good job with uh, Catwoman's apartment. Just something yeah, about like, say. yeah. That we get that we get that one it. steel girder going through her apartment, yeah. and it's like a, it's this tiny little studio with a Murphy bed in it, which I was was fascinated when I was a kid. I was like, I want a studio with a Murphy bed in it right now. Um, yeah, I think that that is her her everything with the Catwoman stuff. I think was a lot more thought out than than the rest of the city. That, not the character itself, though. <laughs> well, the character the character origins are, are silly, um, well, but I I just love how Mich- how much Michelle Pfeiffer made that her own. Where she you cannot tell if she is insane or not. And she's pretty insane. But like there's moments of lucidity where, yeah. where Bruce Wayne brings her back yeah. to reality and she realizes what she's doing. But in, but she's gone crazy. I mean, she, someone tried to kill her. She's been horribly abused mentally and physically her basically by by men. And now she's just taking her fucking vengeance on them with a whip and fury. And it's I mean, I love how they make her move. I love that she's always flipping around and doing all that stuff. And I love the the whip work that that, that they get her to do. And have, and I'll never forget like how she she whips the guns out of the cops or the security guards' hands. And she's like, he's like, don't hurt his lady. We only make three hundred dollars. Take home less like, than three hundred. Yeah, You're overpaid. She's like, You're overpaid. She whips them out of the hands. They run, and then she whips the thing around herself and like tucks it in. So the whip. Yeah. How many backflips can she do though? <laughs> it's like unlimited. Wow. Just like your, just like a cat. Just like a cat. I love she do those Kevin, go get Thomas. There? Kevin, no, go get Thomas. No way. Uh, that is the yeah, only thing that makes Thomas slip. When you started thinking about this, you're like, how did she learn how to how to do yeah. karate? The like, cat. What? Remember the cats. The cats know how to do the karate. Cats, but it. see, that's that's my thing about this movie is it's like it's not you, you don't think it's camp. It's stupid, okay. and you're not supposed yeah. to. And it's like that's why, I, like looking at Catwoman, I'm like I enjoyed it so much more than I did the Joker, where it's like the Joker kind of felt. Like it was at moments trying to be real, trying to be a little bit more grounded. If he's this like fucked up serial killer, this I was but, like, I mean, like this, this bitch Joker, is crazy. The the Joker was more real though. He was just a psychopath. Like he doesn't do anything special. Yeah, but him and his he's not even the, good at the, fighting. But the gang, nothing about that felt real. He like Big he cool felt jackets. real. And then they had they had a bunch of jackets. And these guys that are just like following him around with boom boxes. Look, and it's and like here's the thing. I told you though. Like if you go bad, like me and Cool Greg are gonna be following around with boom boxes, that's matching true, that's jackets. That's true. With like you know patches that we've gotten made, Just. he's gonna be playing Death Angel on the boom boxes. <laughs> God Angel Death. There you go. God <laughs> Angel Death. Uh, let's jump then back to the modern Gotham City. Uh, it of course is the tree lighting ceremony here at Christmas time in Gotham City. Uh, the Ice Queen herself is up there, ready to hit it. She hits the button, the tree lights up. However, from a and sewer grate down that. there. <laughs> I'm the ice princess from our ice queen from down uh, in the sewer grates. You see the black hands out there. Uh, you know, Alfred's walking around with a bunch of presents he bought. Uh, that guy who's in everything is just the guy is the newspaper boy in this one. And he's like, hey, Gotham and fucking penguins got some, got some penguin stories. And he's like, shut up. I'm fucking Alfred. That's insane. It's insane. He's, he's in Gilmore Girls, right? That That's dude. not a poll I could help you with, but I know he's in I a lot of things. Gilmore, I, I do want to say this, though. Most unrealistic thing about this movie, when Alfred turns at the gutters or whatever, or at uh-huh. the, uh, what's it called? The sewer grate, the gutter. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. 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 When he yeah. turns because he thinks he saw something, no, you didn't. You're old as fuck, Alfred. You, you, there's no way <laughs> that you heard like anything it was the or... penguin it was the penguin paws going back in it's he like when you saw remember when you almost literally walked into a raccoon on the streets that's like the same thing here he caught it out of his peripheral greg i don't want to i don't want to just correct you but i don't think they're paws i think it may be talons perhaps claws. Flippers. flippers flipper they call them flippers, flippers. at one point sure flippers, sure. flippers yeah. yeah but like what do you do when it's wrong. a flipper that uh, well okay uh, can i get the science with kevin jingle science 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 with kev I'm Kevin. Kevin. Uh, Kevin, what happens, though, when the flipper is clearly a deformed hand? Now do I have to call it a thing? I Sometimes I call my, my, my hands paws. You know what I mean? Like I'm using it in that kind of terminology. 
I don't think this is a science with Kevin kind of question. <laughs> oh, you were the one who wanted to step up to the plate with no, your big I'm, swinging I'm dick. Saying, now I'm asking claws, you to hit one out of the park or get the fuck right. back to the I'm urinal. Googling claws. Okay. Okay. Anyway. You do that. Anyways, uh, in Alfred's life, huh, I have great eyesight, and I saw some fucking things go back in there. That's oh, weird, but I won't investigate. I'll, maybe I'll report it to Master Bruce later on. Have, I'm very busy. I have unbelievable eyesight, and I saw something. <laughs> 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 Master Bruce is at home. I'll worry about him later. I have all these presents for whoever. I don't even know. We have no friends. Uh, so then from there, we go to we meet Max Shrek, of course, played by the one and only Christopher Walken. Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed as Batman? Because he is Batman, you moron. You know who oh, Christopher Walken is? line, though. Do you know how Walken line. looks like in this video? Walken he looks, looks like, like this is then this is a this is an obscure pool, but I think everybody here will get this except for Nick. When they are doing the Sweeney Todd play in the office, he looks yeah. like the guy playing Sweeney Todd. Yeah, I mean I know what yeah, with the hair with the wig. Okay. Yeah, he, he looks, looks a, lot like a lot like his character in A View to a Kill, which is weird <laughs> when he is the bad guy in that movie too, where he played Zorn. He also looks like the guy in Deer Hunter. Uh, Tim, what's your question? Max Shrek, Greg. Yeah. You got any DC lineage on this guy? I don't. Do you? Uh, not really. I looked him up. He's been in comics, but... but like, so has he been, been in comics cool. before or has why. he been in comics since now? Potentially since. I didn't get yeah. too much research done. I gave up. Didn't think well, it was that valuable. Well, did but, you, well why'd you ask me the question? If you didn't have any- well, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you might have some more, more insight. It's just I think it's a, a point I want to bring up that it is weird about these movies. that They have so much cool shit to pull from and then vicky bales there and i'm googling but my Max original Shrek's idea i'm pretty sure he's the original character that since got brought into stuff wait well i think he was supposed to be two-face i think it was supposed to be harvey dent no and no yeah okay uh, max shrek was introduced in the film so yeah no there you go no yeah. i think he uh, the, was they were like trying to make a what's that's the Moscone? no that's here there's like a character that's famous the like mafia head right that marconi were, marconi or yeah. marconi like they were just now here's one that I, did you guys know this i'm on the batman fandom over here batman the animated series max shrek appears in batman the animated series voiced by christopher walken Amazing. who was asked to reprise his role for the animated series due to his perfect oh trip. wow that's, that's fucking awesome. awesome i don't know if you read the trivia on this or not but evidently that character was originally written as harvey dent and it was Fal- supposed to be it's falcone name. sorry my guy <laughs> well falcone and and uh there's another there oh, it doesn't matter um but I guess for some reason they just wanted to go in a different direction with it, and they and then Billy D. Williams was just like, they're "Like you're done," because apparently this was going to be the movie where, like, um, at the end of it, when he, he gets it. like electrocuted or exploded or whatever, that's what turns him into Two Face. Oh. And then the third movie was supposed to be him as as, as Two Face because he was contracted for that, even though he has gone on record as being like they did. Like people were like, "Oh, they paid him out." He's like, "I didn't get paid. I had a one movie deal with them. I thought they were going to bring me back, but it ended up not them not bringing me back." But that would have been. That would have been cool to see if because th- he was supposed to do three movies. He was supposed to be, supposed to be the Batman three. Yeah, that would have been I, weird if after eighty nine's Billy D and this movie, if he was this weird bad guy as Harvey Dent. I don't know. I kind of feel like know. he looks a lot like a uh, Raj as Ghoul. Is that never good? Raj Ghoul. Raj as Ghoul. Yeah, I can't pronounce it. Don't they want to do Raish now? Thing. Isn't that the thing? Oh, was it Raish? Whatever. Ghoul. He looks like. Keep, I feel like he. They could have given him that name and been like, "Oh, he's been alive forever." And like I, I, with the eyebrows, I would have been like, "I believe it." That looks like him. Max Shrek. And who would you say that to? Hmm. Yeah. So anyways, it's Christopher Walken. He's Max Shrek. Uh, he's got a point. He's there meeting with the mayor. They're about to, about to go out there to the Christmas time celebration for this tree lighting that they've already missed and give a speech. And uh, so, yeah, they're up there, though. And of course, Shrek is, you know, he's a ruthless businessman, shrewd. Uh, he uses it to his advantage to talk about his power plant, which he has conveniently set up right here as a diorama that he's trying to push through for the city. And the mayor's like, no, no fucking way. Come on now. Max, we're not about this. We don't need it. We have plenty of power. And Max, this is, I think, the first time he introduces his, yeah, you know, there is no such, he says it to Bruce, there's no such thing as a sur- 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 surplus, right? Here's the same way, though, right? Of like, no, no, no. Yeah, he wants uh, he, he wants Gotham to be ready for the next, you know, that's with 1% of growth year over year. He wants to be ready for an explosion. And he has this terrible vision of looking at Gotham blinking on and off and the mayor behind it who fucked it all up. And the mayor's not having it. He knows Shrek's full of shit, but no big deal, right? Uh, in the me- middle of this, uh, Selena Kyle, his assistant slash executive assistant slash secretary, walks in to serve them all coffee and does it as awkwardly as possible. And then, of course, decides that with no plan to jump out of her uh, plane with no parachute and interrupt the conversation, to which they all look at her and she backs off. She's like, actually, it's more of a question instead of a suggestion. And they all walking what does he say nick what does he say i was like she makes a hell of a cup of coffee or something like that right 
Yeah, he's not. She's not completely. <laughs> she's not completely housebroken, but she makes a hell of a oh, cup of coffee or something. Right, like that. right, right. And they all leave laughing at her. Ha 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 ha, Selena, you stupid idiot! And she's like, oh, and they all leave, and she's like, like oh, a, I'm such a, an idiot. A secretary probably shouldn't be like, oh hey, I've got an idea. Probably not. No, right. I would. I mean, well, I mean, I don't. Now hold on. Because I was in this. In this, offense, I, I mean, say. as I just meet Max Shrek. I would tell you 100% yes, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. It's kind of funny if we ever can afford a secretary and they have a great question. I'm, I'm, or a great question or suggestion. Mid-pitch? I'm all ears for it. Mid pitch. Let's say we're sitting down. Who am with, I pitching to? With, the mayor. Mean, we're sitting, oh, or mayor. <laughs> the rock. Like, you know, <laughs> the rock. someone. And like, okay. and, and okay. Andy comes over here with this guitar and he's like, but I've got a pitch. You know what? Andy, you Well, come if Andy's out got with the guitar, guitar, I want to hear this pitch no matter in. what. I just want you to know that. Andy, heads up. If I'm at a family member's funeral and you walk in, you're like, I got a pitch and you've got a guitar. I'm like, let's hear it. Everyone is going right, to be great. Right. It's going to be great. Right. Nick comes in. This no is how Pertillo would have wanted He's it. What's your pitch. pitch, Andy? What's your pitch? You know what I mean? Like, I'm all about that life, Andy, just in case. I'm not trying to put it in your head. I don't want you to think about it too hard, but that's, great. I would that's like good that. To know. I'm, glad, I'm glad to know I have the green light here. You, know? you do. Like you Steph, do. Like Steph Curry, you know? You do. Um, so she sits in there and complains a bit about her life. Uh, Shrek and the mayor go out. They're immediately, uh, you know, the press is there like, oh, 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 and they walk up to the podium to give their little speech or whatever and everything else. And the mayor steps to it. He's like, I want to introduce somebody who's done more for this city than Jesus Christ himself. You know what I mean? This guy is basically our Santa Claus, Max Shrek. And Max Shrek walks up there and then he does the old pat down for his speech. Uh, it actually, he, we might have cut away before then, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Selena Kyle at the same time realizes she did not give his speech. She did not put his speech in his pockets. So she grabs it. She rushes downstairs to try to give it to him. Back there, he realizes he doesn't have a speech. He turns to Chip, his fucking, this guy, Nick, you want to talk about somebody who should have been playing football. You know what oh. I mean, Andy? Why wasn't this guy out there on the offensive line for your <laughs> Dallas Cowboys? What are you talking about? Let me explain. Go Cowboys, baby! Other- my only other touchstone for this guy was that he was in Hudson Hawk as one of the bad guys. He was in there as one of the candy bars. Like all the bad guys, Tim, in this movie were named after candy bars. And I think he might have been Baby Ruth. I'm not quite it's, sure. It's so I love hard that. to watch that movie right now. Like either, you can't find it streaming anywhere. I've wanted it's to rewatch it. Oh, yeah, so many me too. Times. I want to watch it for free. I think it, buy it on Voodoo. We'll watch it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just remember him being in it and he just plays this dumb lunk. And it's oh, so no good. way. Yeah. So I'm looking at his. He well, was, no, not that. I have no he reference. Was, oh, he's also about. in that football movie, right? He's he in the Zanky. program. He's yeah. in the program. I'm on, I'm looking through his, his IMDb right now, and yeah, he was in the fucking program. The guy who did the steroids. He was the guy that that Holy guy that shit. did steroids and cries at the end, and then he was yeah. one of the guys that lays down in the middle of the road. And remember yeah. that scene where everyone's like, "That's so awesome!" And then kids tried to do it in real life because kids are stupid and they got. You run say over. that scene? No, remember it from the trailer. People did it from watching the trailer. Kids got ran over, and they said, "We're moving that scene from the fucking uh, thing." I, oh, that's. I, what I it feel was. like this yeah, jacket thanks. is like set up weird. Like I, people shouldn't <laughs> look this way. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> he's a shape that he's. But not. I don't understand. Like yeah. I feel like his shape ends Mark right Christmas. here. Kevin, you guys Kevin, in the, the in, in the way that they sort of artificially created a shape for the penguin, right? He's mm-hmm. wearing like this weird kind of yeah. bodysuit. I feel like yeah. that's the same thing here, where his shoulders should not be there. But yeah, he was Zangief in the Street Fighter movie. Was he really? Mm-hmm. That's that's awesome. Yeah. This guy had a great career. What's his name? Maybe we'll figure that out by the end. Andrew By Br- 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 there it is. And you can look for him soon. His impressive. current his his latest movie is currently in post production called Chuck Hank and the San Diego Twins. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell he's yeah. He's Baron D and he's Baron D in we, that. So we I gotta really, do that in review. He looks like a Baron. Like his yeah. name is Baron. I'm like, I buy it. Yep. I'm looking. There's a trailer. A turf war has been raging in Old Town for generations. <laughs> that's oh, that's how shit. it starts. <laughs> he was also in Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. So you're saying we should get him on We Have Cool Dude, Friends? I feel like he he got he did so good as uh, Zangief. Let me see. Uh, switch to yeah, Anyways, he, uh, he, 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 remi- he tells fine. Chip, remind me to fire, or remind me to take it out on uh, the secretary when I get back there because he's like, I'm going to fucking do who she's going to get one of these. And so he walks back up, takes off his glasses, and he didn't even need the speech, right? Because he's Max Shrek. Well, he also tossed out presents very awkwardly. It, it was then also he takes like off his two glasses. lines. Like he went up there and he was like, oh, I wish I could do more. Yeah. I love you all. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, Yo, he nailed that speech. You kidding me? World, totally. World peace, but instead, give it back a little power. I mean, what was it too? Yeah, like you know, I'm just a, I'm just a lucky schmo. I'm just an old schmo who got lucky or whatever, and just, and you know, whatever. Sue me for wanting to give something back. And then but he, I, yeah, again, he, I love the commitment to this movie, just being so on the nose with everything it ever does. It's like cool, totally. the duality of Catwoman and Batman. This guy Hold literally. On. I was going to say, don't even. He just wants more power. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even know he th- thought that. My favorite part about this is that he's like. 
you know, I just wish I could give, you know, what is it? World peace and a little bit of power back and put it in a box, in a box with a big, a present with a big bow. And then in Penguin goes, Oh, but you can. Oh, but you will. All right. Looking at his watch. And then what rolls up? A giant present. Like if I'm the penguin doing that, I'm like, Holy shit, guys, you won't believe what he just walked into. He said the thing we're about to do. Guys, did you have a copy of his speech? You did. And that's not in the speech. Well, this is fucking insane. All right. I think we need to. This is what I'm talking about, right? God wants us to be here. Exactly. This is is divine intervention that we are supposed to do this. I'm very proud to kill the firstborn of every Gotham person. I think at the end of this, right, you know, Penguin unfortunately has, you know, he falls to his demise and there's a very weird little funeral scene. But before we get there, I think we need to just shout out to the fact that the idea that the Penguin could rise to this level oh, here of we power. Go. Oh, okay. No, just the idea that he could rise to this level of power from where he came from. Sure. Think about American the Dream. origins of the Penguin. Think about how he got to it. How did he get followers? How did he get people to like believe in his message? And no how well, the gang, learn- remember, is the, the circus gang. It's the, red, it's the Red Triangle gang from the circus he was in. It, it's just so bizarre that he has this much power and technology now. <laughs> like, I don't know what the process was. There's there, a lot but- of technology left over at the zoo, Andy. And really, if you think about it, it really comes together. <laughs> No, the tech stuff, the tech stuff, I'm with you. But I liked I liked these people. It was weird that there was a bunch of clowns because I was just like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. And like, no one's immediately like the Joker's back. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that that's way too too bizarre of a, a choice for them to make between these two movies. But like I liked the circus stuff. And it like to me, I'm like, I buy this. I buy them looking at him as the freakest of all freaks. Sure. And just listening to him. Sure. Okay. Uh so yeah, oh but you can't, oh but you will. Uh giant package rolls up and the mayor's like, Shrek, yeah, that's nice. Did you, that's nice. And he's like, I didn't do it. And uh, what happens? Poof, it explodes and just fucking uh, acrobats and the giant skull guys and clowns and uh the guy with the monkey and the gun. He's another character actor, Nick, that I see in everything. The guy he with died. the, the huh? right, ghost. Oh, he wasn't ghost. Get off my train. Get off my train. He teaches him how to push the can. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. It was great. He died in real life, too. In 2005, yeah. Get off my plane. Uh, so yeah, they come out and they just start fucking up the city. You know, they're knocking stuff around. They're shoot. They're shooting the shit. They're they're fucking people uh, all over the place, and they're burnt. They kick open one place, and they you know, the the guy dressed as the devil with the pitchfork and his fire spits fire in there to light shit on fire. Uh, you got motorcyclists going around. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer comes out. She gets scared, drops all her notes. One of them gets stuck to her head. And I'll tell you right now, as somebody who's done a few little productions, you, I'm sure when that takes happen, like oh my god, this is perfect. Don't let that get. You know what I mean? Like that's so cool. It's stuck in her hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anyways, all hell breaks loose there with the Red Triangle Gang or the Circus Gang, as uh, Commissioner Gordon will call them. And but before and then, M- Commissioner Gordon, of course, won't even get out of his fucking car to do a little bit of police work. He just leans over and goes, "What are you waiting for? Light it up!" And sure as shit, boom, bat symbol in the sky. And we cut back to Wayne Manor, where Michael Keaton, aka Bruce Wayne, is doing just jack shit. Sitting He's in the sitting dark. in a dark room, waiting, waiting for this light to be shown on him. You want to talk about? Give me some characterization of how fucked up this Bruce Wayne is. Let's start right there. He's not in the cave. He's not researching anything. He's not trying to live a Bruce Wayne life. Just sitting in the dark, waiting for anything to happen. Alfred's bored out like, of his gourd. Alfred's like, do you, do you want me to? Do you want me to put on Netflix or something? I it's hear the show that the Office people like this Office show. Do you want me to just that you want to watch that while either. you're waiting? It's like no, I don't have to say good channel right now. Back. In my, in my <laughs> fucking turtlenecks, god damn it, man! But the light, the you know, the bat symbol lights up in the sky above Wayne Manor in Gotham City, which then triggers two different bat symbol reflectors to reflect it right into him in that room. And I'll I'm, tell you, this yeah. would be hard to explain if you had anybody over. <laughs> if any, anybody else is at Wayne Manor at any time when this signal goes off, oh boy, we got some trouble. But that, that's one of those things. That and the door to the Iron Maiden that he would have to go into the fish tank to trigger those are those moments where i was like somebody really liked the 66 batman like they were doing a little homage there we do not need this at all well i love that he's like all right let's get in the iron maiden and the and alfred's just like i'm gonna go on the fucking stairs because and and, and michael keaton beats him by all of ten five seconds yeah he has enough time to turn on the computer before alfred walks in and come on man you love the idea that the the uh, the iron spikes go away when he goes in when like, it's fully the, closed yeah only when it's, fully <laughs> it's like all right the threat is gone <laughs> yeah 
Uh, yeah, so that we're not even to the Iron Maiden yet. But, uh, you know, he gets dressed up as Batman. He gets in the Batmobile. He drives over there. This is when we see the new suit. Does he, Do we get the whole dramatic him putting on? Or that's later, we do. I think, actually. No, this is, is it here? It this is where up. we walk in. He's got a million suits in the yeah. Iron Cave now. And he goes, he does the thing where shink, shink. And it's like a dumb joke of like, hey, I've got a bunch of suits, but they're all the same suit. I did not I need this. This is when I was like, okay, we're going campy with this. But I do say, I do think the suit, I used to harp on it a little bit more, but I do think it's a lot more streamlined than this, and I do like the way that he moves in it. And I yeah. think the cowl actually looks better in this one than the A9. Yeah, Nick, when we did, yes. when we did this ranking for uh, on the kind of was podcast, wrong. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, after watching this and seeing Andy, those really nice close up shot shots, what's up? Andy hit the song for best bat suit. Bat suit, bat suit. Mm-hmm. Which one? The best. I'm Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Welcome Kevin, to Bat Basu Basu. I'm Kevin. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller. This is one of the many podcasts within a podcast. Of course, we have already started ranking the best bat suits. Currently, the list stands at number one eighty nine Batman, number two sixty six Batman. Where do you guys want to put Batman Returns? So I still like the eighty nine Batman just a little bit better because I like the design of the abs and I like the gloves that they. I think the gloves have a lot more detail on them and I like that the the boots have a lot more detail on them. But I do I can't disagree that the cowl just fits his face better in yeah. this and just looks a lot like a lot easier to use. But I like the I like the color of the eighty nine better because this one has a little bit more. It's a little more gray. And that yeah, Kevin, reason, has, sh- Kevin has shot it up here on this on the screen. If you're a viewer I for us to see so far, too. Well, you so I, still, I still give the 89 just a little bit of a nod, but I think he, I, I do think the the return suit is actually pretty dope. I used to hate it, but now I. Here's my it. thing: is the only knock I have on the the return suit is the abs. I miss the more human being abs rather than metal plate abs. Right. But I can't. And I won't let that get in the way of saying the Batman Return suit is a better suit. I enjoy the form factor more. I think the cowl's better. The cowl's I like the cape better. better too. He looks taller in it because his head's not so big too, which yeah. is nice. Bro, I got Jordans, man. Come on. Yeah. It does have Jordans. I knew Tim was going to vote for this the second I saw that piece of trivia. It's a Jordan sixes. I was like, I don't know what that means, but I'm sure Tim just sixes claimed. are dope. Yeah, no, ninety two. Let's go. I feel like it's all about the cowl, where it's like the cowl in the middle there looks dumb. Mm-hmm. It looks like a mad cat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then on the right, it, it's it. This is what I imagine when I imagine Batman. I think yeah, it's the eyebrows. It's definitely a bit more streamlined, but I do love the more, um, not like the more. I, I don't know what's what the word I'm looking for is like just arminess of yeah. the chest. I love how the the pec muscles aren't like this is a human pec. It's just like this is kind of armorized. And yeah, I, I just love the I love the vibe of it. It reminds me of the flak jackets they wore or the, the bulletproof vests they wore in uh, Robocop where they had the, the rough outline of the human like muscles, but it wasn't. It was like angular and like octagonal. Yeah. yeah. Right. Really, really cool. Well, it looks like Robotech, the new ranking Robocop. Batman Returns is uh, the better bat suit here. Sorry about that, Nick. I know that hurts for you. It really sticks That's okay. Her you live and learn, guys. You grow and you progress. Jesus Christ. <laughs> The next two bat suits uh, are gonna be interesting. <laughs> no future spoilers. Uh, back to this movie, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all hell's breaking loose. All right, the circus gang, aka Red Triangle gang, is out there. They're fucking shit up. But Batman is on the case, and this is again where everybody who watched Batman v Superman and wanted to talk shit about Batman killing people, I will accept your handwritten apology letters to me. You can send them to the kind of funny PO box. Andy, what is the kind of funny PO box once again? P.O. Box 8429 That does not sound like a real one. That does not sound like the real P.O. Box. No, no. I, I just needed to fill time. You can write to me at kind of funny doc or kind of funny. P.O. Box 27203, San Francisco, California, 94127. I will P.O. accept your apologies oh. for not understanding Batman history and thinking that it was a huge deal that Ben Affleck killed people. Because let's talk about Michael Keaton just fucking people up, Nick. At one point, so the only thing I can say is that he doesn't. We they don't call a ton of attention to it, unlike Batman v Superman. Wait, hold where on a second. He just attacks Nick, people Nick, for no hold reason. On. At <laughs> one no reason. reason. At one he point, the Batmobile uses some mechanism to rise, spin <laughs> <Yeah>. around, <laughs> drop down, and blow a jet mm-hmm. at someone. Mm-hmm. But I will say this. I will say this. The difference is those people were clearly killing people in batman v superman there was a random guy hired to drive a truck 
And he's just thinking to himself, all I got to do tonight, guys, it's a late shift. I got to pick this thing up and drive it over to that Lex Luthor warehouse, drop it off. I get to go home to my kids. What's that in the sky? Holy shit. It just <laughs> fucking shot me for no reason. <laughs> Batman in Batman v Superman is a murderer. In this one, at least, the tri- I would feel as his lawyer confident defending him. I was like, well, the guy did come at you with a stick of dynamite. Granted, you didn't need to strap it to him and then shove him down a hole for him to explode <laughs> body parts. But at well, least remember, he doesn't defense. even blow up the guy he takes the bomb from. He, he takes out the guy, takes his bomb, then walks with the bomb. Like, how am I going to get rid of this fucking bomb? And then old fucking circus for porn or strong man shows up and he's like, yeah, fucking yeah, hit me. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? I will hit you just to distract you. While I shove this in your balls and push you down this hole. He is a murderer. Straight up. And he it enjoys is- it. So, but it's, yeah. it's entertaining to watch. We see all the different things the Batmobile can do. I enjoy when he puts out the long poles and knock the dudes with stilts down. Yeah. Uh, he's slamming people together, obviously. He what? burns the, the fire dude alive. I feel like and to the, be fair, the, I don't I, I'm, I'm defending this for comedic sake, but I did not like these elements when I was a kid either. I didn't I didn't like the elements of him blowing up the, the ace chemicals in the last one either. I just think it's kind of lazy. And I think that they could have come up with a lot more fun ways for Batman to have subdued these people than just exploding them or lighting them on fire. I like how Tim's mic really liked what I just said because it just, it just rose up and was like, hello. Um, so, yeah, that's all happening. He's fucking people up. At some point, he gets out, uh, he rolls over, uh, gets out of the car, and Selena Kyle has been grabbed by one of the perpetrator clown people, right? And he's got a stun gun. And he's all like, I'm going to fucking I'm gonna stun her brains out. And Batman's like, mm, we got the eyes like we like with the light lit up. Mm-hmm. And so eventually he does the thing where he shoots one of his gadgets. He goes behind the dude. He's like, ha, ah, you missed. And he just yanks it and yanks this piece of fucking uh, whatever brick out. I don't even know. Plaster. Really stupid. Hit, I hated that. Hits the guy in the back of the head and drops him. And then really and, dumb. Like, so how did he know? I thought it was funny. I thought it was cool. How uh, did he how, know what? How would he have known that that perfect piece would have like, I don't know. It's, but like. That being the solution to this scene, I did not like there could have been 30 other different ways that they could have had this, you know, oh, that's the clever Batman I see. But he's just like, oh, let me just pull out this slab of rock off the wall. Like, I don't know. It's stupid. Well, Andy, you missed it. There's a deleted scene before he gets before the bat scene goes up where he's down in the bat cave training and he's just shooting grappling hooks at different types of plaster. (laughs) Exactly. Pulling them out. Just how do they know Gotham that well? He knows Gotham that well. He's like, wait, is that the that's the bank at third and uh, third and fifth? Yeah. Okay, I got this. Okay, it's mostly sand. It'll come yeah, out. it's mostly sand. <laughs> it's got a brick. It's got a plaster finish to the bricks. So I got right, this. Don't worry. Okay. Yanks it down. He gets a short interaction with Selena Kyle there, where they talk a bit. She fumbles for words. He doesn't really talk. She she tries to talk to him. It doesn't go well. Uh, he goes off to fuck up more people. She then immediately is like, "Ah, oh, God, I can't talk to anybody. I'm an idiot." So she uh, reaches down though, gets the stun, sees the guy with the stun gun. She grabs the stun gun. She stuns him just to see it. And she takes the stun gun. A little foreshadowing. Exactly. She likes to stun people. Uh, meanwhile, in the middle of all this, Max Shrek was like, I'm fucking out of here. Peace. And didn't want to like, you know, he snuck off like the slimy little jerk he is. And again, you want to talk about the penguin literally sitting there going like, we are on a mission from God. Mm-hmm. Max Shrek just goes down a random alleyway and takes another random alleyway and falls perfectly into a penguin trap that like it wasn't like he got herded that way by anybody. It was mm-hmm. just like. What that's the hell the, was this? Yeah, that that's was how he tried to do shit. it. They figured it out, and then he goes down, and he slides on down, and he gets knocked out. Um, Batman subdues the motherfucking gang for the most part. Some of them go away. We t- the scene with the remote control batarang happens. Yeah, where it knocks everybody out, but at the last second, the dog jumps six feet into the air, even so though we clearly dumb. see in the shot it jumped six inches. <laughs> grabs the thing, brings it down, walks off with it, which again will be later uh, in, in in the plot here of what we need. And the, the again, the batarang had enough power to knock out. 150 pound plus human beings. It's not hard. But the dog, totally cool. Poodle is Circus very poodle, man. Come on. Circus poodles are tough. You didn't know that. I understand. That That's is something that is well known. That is well known. Oh, yeah. um, this is also where we get the thing we talked about earlier with uh, looks like the circus game's back in t- the circus game's back in town, Batman. We'll see. And he just walks away, right? And it's, again, he's working with everybody. We're all here. We're one big happy Gotham City family. This is how it is. Um, Max Shrek comes to. Uh, after we get the huge fly through of the dilapidated zoo and Arctic world and all the oceanic things and the crab with the dead claws and stuff like Gotham's such a fucked city. They're like, we don't even care about the zoo anymore. There's no reason for the zoo. And of course, this is where the penguin washed up like 35 years ago. It looked like they didn't care about the zoo then either. They Then I, that's another fucked up thing, you know, of like it got so bad in Gotham. <laughs> they were like, we're gone and we're not taking any of the animals with us. You know, we're just going to go. The animals can live there on their own and just figure it the fuck out. Well, we they were wild at one point. They'll figure it out. 
I, I think when they're in captivity in cages, though, it's harder to do. Maybe at the end they open the cages and we're just like, hey, this is your land again. Enjoy it. Who knows, though? <laughs> uh max shrek comes to right and uh he's in arctic world it's all dilapidated it's gross there's giant pools of water everywhere there's a bunch of fucking penguins all over the place there's a bunch of clowns and uh, random circus people eating the giant dinner at this giant table look like they're having fun but then he looks to the left and it's the penguin there feeding a bunch of penguins he's like yeah, yeah. i forget what he says he says something funny though his introduction and uh max shrek's like oh my god he grabs his hanky he's like the rumors were true the bird man and so yeah, Penguin's down there, and he's got Max Shrek now, and he's going to use uh, Max Shrek however he fucking sees because this is what it's all about. He's got blackmail. He's got a plan. Uh, he gets a Christmas stocking at one point to convince uh, Shrek of, like, how he's going to bring him up there because Penguin's whole plan is, like, oh, I really wish I would have known my parents. Like, I need you to bring me up there, uh, introduce me to the world so I can find my real parents. He knows he's a cobblepot, as Batman puts it together, and I'll put it here when that happens later, right? Batman is doesn't doesn't believe him for the longest time. We had a couple of different things of him watching news, uh, things about all this shit happening. And eventually, though, after going from not believing, I hope he finds his parents, uh, to then uh, looking through uh, old news clippings and finding the stuff of the Red Triangle Circus and how, uh, yeah, they had an aquatic bird boy there that escaped after some kids went missing and some were found dead or whatever, and like he got away without questioning all this shit. So he knows that this there's more to Cobblepot than meets the eye here, right? Even though he doesn't know that that one soup he gets is supposed to be cold which i always thought was uh, rude about what's the name of it i always thought it was gazpacho it wasn't it wasn't no no gazpacho says it yeah i know and yeah. in my head though as a kid i always thought oh yeah what it's gazpacho it's supposed to be cold and then he says something completely different in this movie like oh fuck i, don't, I remember this scene wrong because i could not understand what that word was and i mm. oh, will forget it again you know what i mean the more you learn andy you know what I mean? the more you know anyway so uh i yeah he's like shrek listen find my parents why would i fucking help you i'm max shrek and i'm a son of a bitch and he's like oh funny story about that and he brings out this stocking that has all or like christmas stocking that has all of his uh, misdeeds in it and he's got a thermos full of fucking uh radioactive runoff or whatever they've got pools of the shit in the back sludge that green he's got, sludge exactly he's got uh paperwork that uh, uh proves that his you know uh net neutral plant or whatever is actually destroying everything and he's like i would have had those shredded and he pulls it out and it's all it has been shredded and he's like a lot of tape and a little patience uh and then finally he's like how's your original business partner right he's like oh he's on an extended vacation he's like sure he is and he pulls out his hand he's like hi it's my hand he's got you want to see any other parts of my body so he's got max over the barrel here all right because what what's he say andy what's he say I don't know. What? You flush it, I <laughs> flaunt it. Anything oh, that these, mm-hmm. you th- these people try to throw away, these Gotham socialites, uh, Penguin's going to find and use to his advantage. How did he not find any of Bruce Wayne's receipts for buying a bat plane or a bat boat or anything like that? Remains to be yeah. seen. We don't know. I guess Bruce he bu- Yeah, he bought the bat plane from Boeing. Yeah, he has a receipt. It was it was on a deal. You got the bat plane and the bat boat too for. Well, it's it's gonna be like another Batman movie we'll watch later, where he's like, I bought the body of the plane from this company, but the wings from another company. Like, ah, oh, fucking brilliant, Bruce. You know what I mean? That's how you get them. Dude, it's mm-hmm. future spoilers. That you don't know what movie it is though, so you don't know what I'm talking about, and you don't know that I'm talking about the cow and not the plane. Um, the so Catwoman movie. Catwoman, yeah. Oh man, the Reddit. Poof, man, the Reddit really wants us to do that Catwoman movie. Don't fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's in the universe. I'm like, it's not in the universe. I want to do it, man. I want to do it. it. (laughs) You can do it. You can do it all by yourself. Just for chaos. (laughs) Um, And so Max Shrek's like, fuck, I'm over a barrel here. Oh, this also, I should point out, too, the Penguin introduces all his his, uh, umbrellas there. I like that. He's got the different umbrellas on, you know, all the different shit he's going to do to them and use them and stuff like that. Dude, Uh, later when he says, I pulled out a cute one. It's such a good lie. Oh, yeah. Ah, grab the cute one. When when he uh when he scares Shrek with the the gun umbrella. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what is this supposed to do? Hypnotize me? No, I'll just give you a splitting headache. Well, it's not yeah. working. And then they're yeah, blanks. They, they, but then he goes, they're blanks. He d- it didn't even occur to me that it was a gun at that point. Like the fact that he was like, ah, oh, they're blanks. Don't worry, but you think I'd kill you right now? I was like, oh, I thought it was just like an explosion to scare somebody. I didn't know it was actually shooting. Like <laughs> it was like it tended to be a gun. I don't know. It was weird. Uh, from there, Max understands the situation. He's over the barrel. He's got to help. We jump back to Selena Kyle, who does the now infamous, honey, I'm home. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm not married. And walks into her apartment, uh, which, as uh, Nick has pointed out, has a Murphy bed, which he enjoys quite a bit. Because Murphy beds are cool. They're They're really cool. Uh, She walks around. Miss Kitty comes home. Miss Kitty, apparently, just a slut cat. Just getting fucked all over. You know what I mean? This is is canon. This is canon. This is canon, Kevin. Uh, but uh, uh, that Michelle being fa- said, spray and neuter your pets, people. 
Spray and neuter them. Yes, it's very important. <laughs> spray them. Spray them down with some. What is it? What is it? What, is it, what, is it, what am I spay, saying? Spay, 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 spay. Spay. That's it. Spay and neuter. <laughs> Cut them up. Uh, <laughs> Miss Kitty gets some uh, milk. Michelle Pfeiffer plays her messages. They're from her mom being annoying. Uh, they're from a guy she was going to go on a Christmas getaway with, saying he's not going to go on the Christmas getaway. Boy, it's from Go Gotham Lady. I don't know who is it. Tim Burton. Oh, oh really? look at that little fact. Wow. Dude, some of these messages, and it's later, it's an it's the second round of messages, but the one that's straight up like, hey man, hey women, there's a perfume you should be using if you're a secretary that maybe your boss will want to fuck you. Candle, candlelight <laughs> dinner, yeah, later. Shit. On. That yeah. is the most disturbing thing. Like at any point. I don't know. Like it's 2020 and that's not appropriate. There was no way that was appropriate in 92. No. Oh no, no, no. It wasn't. It was it was definitely playing into the more like, you know, 50s feel of like, oh man, make yourself attractive for your boss. I mean, that's all that's what the whole catwoman narrative, right? Is that she's meant to be this anti-hero or whatever, but in this movie, meant to be like a feminist icon, right? Of like, no, fuck this. I'm gonna own my sexuality. I'm gonna own this. I don't need. I don't need any of you. And I'm gonna fucking play you against each other and get what I want out of the situation. Even, even when when Michelle Pfeiffer's got the messy hair gone, you're like, yeah, no, she's hot. You could tell that she's attractive. It reminds me of uh, in in oh, what's that? She's the all that. Not another movie. team yeah, movie. She's, all, yeah, team she's movie. all that. She's got she's glasses that, in her hair up, and they pull it down and take exactly. off the glasses. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's like, ah, right, we see it. We see it. We get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, however, though, the last message on Selena's uh, answering machine, at least for this scene, is herself saying, hey, you fucked up, idiot. You got to go all the way back and get the files for the Bruce Wayne meeting that's happening on Wednesday. Uh, you should have, you know, probably wrote yourself a post-it note at home before you did any of that. And or Selena's just like, uh, literally go in early the next day. Was there anything to be gained by the hour trip back to the office, the hour trip back? And then what are you going to do? You're going to start research. Just get some sleep. Go in there at 6 in the morning. Pull all those files. You don't That's know when Max Shrek starts his day, though. All right? Max Shrek's not the kind Ruthless of guy that starts his day at 6 He starts his day at noon. He's coming in. Oh, my God. Noon. You don't know anything about being successful You don't know business shit man. about Max Shrek. He's got to be up for the stock <laughs> markets. He's got to see what's happening over in China so, and shit. Yeah. I bet Andy, Max yeah. Shrek probably gets three to four hours of sleep a night. That's Andy, we've often thought of you, Andy, as the Max Shrek of Kind of Funny. What time did you go to bed? I have thought about that. Oh, my. Well, the weekend was a mess, man. The weekend was like, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Nick. I'll tell you what. Like Saturday night, went to bed like at 630 in the morning, woke up at 10 a.m. for the Cowboys game. Cowboys getting throttled. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to sleep. But I never did. The Cowboys won, man. What do you guys What are you guys thoughts oh, on Max great. Shrek's hair? I love great. it. It's totally it real. It does such a there. it does such a disadvantage to Christopher Walken because when you're a kid and you watch this movie, you're like he's an old man, and then you watch Christopher Walken for the next forty years of cinema and go, how is he not getting older? And yeah, then you walk yeah. here, like, oh, he was young. I see. Is it a wig though? Oh, Andy. Is it a wig? Uh. I don't know. Wigging out with Scarpino. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wigging Out with Scarpino, where we talk about whether or not something's a wig in a movie that we're talking about. This is 100% not a wig. That is Christopher Walken's real hair. That part where it looks really? like it's glued on right there around the entire hairline. Totally just how he was born. No, it's 100% <laughs> a wig. Now, here's wow. the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like he is... does not have the amazing hair that you might want. But let me tell you Ooh. how you can keep the hair that you have. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, yeah. this episode is brought to you by Keeps. As guys, much of our identity is wrapped up in our hair, from how it feels after getting a fresh cut to the way it's perfectly styled before going out. That's why when you get into our 20s and 30s and start noticing the first signs of hair loss, it definitely feels like panic time. Because let's face it, no guy is ever ready to go bald. Now there's Keeps, the simple and easy way to keep your hair. That's why they called it that. Uh, did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they are 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some hair left. Andy and Nick have been doing this type of stuff for years now, uh, helping to prevent that hair from leaving their heads. Uh, Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. You may have tried them before, but... Probably never for this price. Uh, you can keep treatments typically, or keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results. So it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using keeps, the more hair you will save. Um, you can go to keeps.com slash morning to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash morning. If you're ready to take action to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash morning. Next up, I want to give a shout out to manscaped and i haven't read this copy yet uh yeah. but just looking at it right now there's a, there's there, yeah there's it's it's a it's a weird one for me i'll tell you why uh do you have a moose near the caboose that needs to be tamed 
Oh, yeah. I'm talking hairy, big, and need some support. Thankfully, our sponsor today, Manscaped, has you covered to keep the hair looking nice and trimmed and feeling fully supported. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Beluga. Did you hear that? That's your moose asking for Manscaped. <laughs> What? I don't understand what any of that means, <laughs> but I do understand that they are talking about uh, your, you know, your your bushy bush down there, and you're trying to get it all cleaned up. The Manscaped engineering Boof team just perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created, the Lawnmower 3.0. What was that, Nick? The Buffalata, man. The Phoebe Buffet. Saying. You got to make sure that thing's trimmed down. For a limited time, when you order the perfect package kit, you get two free gifts. You get the shed travel bag and manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs uh the waistband of these boxer briefs is super elastic to reduce chafing and rubbing that's something you don't want especially when you got a lot of hair down there you know what i'm talking about try to get that thing clean you need to manscape ladies and gentlemen manscape right now by going to get 20 percent off of free shipping with the code morning at manscapes.com your balls will thank you get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code morning at manscape.com from the moose to the caboose, always use the right tools for the job. <laughs> Soup to nuts, manscaped. Hey, man, you got to respect it. They know what they're doing. They get you know it, what I mean? Man. They get it. Listen, if you can't have fun talking about shaving your balls, what can you have fun talking about? Batman Returns? I'm having fun. Uh, so Selena goes back to Shrek HQ and starts going through all the paperwork. And then lo and behold, Max Shrek, now freed from the penguin, since he's going to help him uh, get his family records, uh, comes back to the office. And finds Selena going through this filing cabinet and spooks her a bit. She's like, oh, God. And then Selena just can't shut up, right? Because she's being, she's doing the right thing. She's there. She's working hard. I'm gathering all your stuff from the Bruce Wayne meeting. I've got all this different stuff. And I got, I I, I even pulled the protected files. And he's like, wait a second. How'd you pull the protected files? And she's like, well, I guess that Geraldo, the the name of your chihuahua is what you, and it's weird that Max is hung up on this chihuahua, but he is. That would be the actual uh, name of this or the password and lo and behold it is and i got in and i started pulling stuff and she's like oh it's really interesting stuff though way above my thing but it's interesting how it's actually not a power generator or a power plant it's actually a capacitor and it's going to store the energy and then you can do whatever you want with it later and she's like you know what, what was the line nick you said she says it's really interesting i would say and he goes and who, who would, would you say, say that to and like, she nobody. goes, of course, nobody, of course, nobody. Yeah, of course. No. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, she stands up. He starts threatening her. It gets get really, really tense. Backs her up to the window. And then he, he's ah, 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 and like walking there. Creepy as fuck, man. God walking is terrifying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's like, oh, she's like, oh, you really had me there. He's like, I and he, poof, shoves her out the window. So violent. She goes, she breaks through a couple of the different Shrek uh, cat uh, awnings, slowing her down a bit, but then she slams into the asphalt below. Uh, See, now my take on this was that she didn't die necessarily. It's just like it sh- that it just kind of knocked her out and fucked up her brain. But then I guess that doesn't really backed by the nine lives motif because this is life number one, right? Right. Yeah. Um, like but you I, said. I mean, she she like doesn't die in any of the other ones, like right? The... The, but that would have killed her. That's what she's saying with this nine lives. The garbage. bullets would have killed her. She also she would have died. The shoulder. People get shot in the shoulder. Well, the kitty let her. She'd have been fine. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, no. And, that that the the sand high fall. Yeah. That sand that is just like a the mattress. sand would have acted. <laughs> it's just like a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big tempurpedic. He just bounces right out of it, right? Kevin, that's how no, physics work. No, no, no. Then yeah, yeah, penguin, like, all, penguin all has of, the the thing around her neck that lifts her yeah. up, really. Huh? All of this is just you know really baffling. Like, I don't know. This is super goofy. Yeah, I don't know what the cats are doing uh, to bring her back to life. Actually, the lies nibble- there. A bunch of different cats run on in. The they start licking on the finger, her. Though. They the start nibbling, nibbling on the fingers finger. is like a visceral it. memory for me I that I hated it. as a kid. I appreciate, you know, and granted, I know Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, was obviously a big star back then, but not like now she's like a legend, right? You know what I mean? Mm. But she's they were still like, hey, we want this cat to lick inside your mouth and move your upper lip. And she's like, oh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here, I'm here, Tim Burton, to be Catwoman. So let's do well, it. Well, wait, I don't know if Tim has that moment, but there's a piece of trivia about the bird in her mouth. That's fascinating. I don't, I don't. What give oh, it to us right that's now? A real, that's a real bird. They yeah, I right. had to train the bird to like be comfortable being in someone's mouth. And they, it was there for like a couple seconds. And they just like basically rolled on it, put it, and then she, she spits it out. But they wanted there to be literally the one shot of her spitting a live bird out of her mouth, which she does. That, what are that the odds that shit Same thing. I guarantee it shit in her mouth. If I was in your mouth, Kevin, I'd be so scared. I'd just shit all down your throat. Oh, God. my God. Same thing with uh, the fact that like she learned the actual whip tricks, right? Like she knew how to use that whip, which isn't like outrageous, but like still crazy that she knew how to use a whip. Crack that whip. 
Da -da 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 -da. And Mag <laughs> Shrek slip. Uh, she's on the ground. The cats run up. They lick her back to life. <laughs> the cats yeah. just chew on her and lick her back to life. You know what I mean? She eyes snap open all creepily. Uh, she then goes back to her house again, but and it's kind of the same scene, but it's not right. Where she throws up and she's like, "Honey, I'm home." Oh, that's right. I'm not married. And walks in all zombie and doesn't get her keys on the right thing and yada yada yada. And she presses play on the messages and she goes to the milk and starts chugging the milk. Just ah. And it's, it's a so million messages. Nasty. It's nasty. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of messages from her mom and just being a dick about all sorts of different things. She skips them, skips them, skips them. And then eventually it's the Lady uh, Gotham perfume, perfume again. And it's what we talked about earlier of like, yeah, you if you wear this to the office, your boss will want to keep you late for a meeting, a candlelight meeting or whatever. And like, fuck you on the desk or whatever. And that's when she's like, ah, and she throws the milk and smash, gets it. And then she just gets the fucking frying pan. Or she starts the whole bunch of stuff. She smashes shit, but then she gets the cast iron and she smashes more shit. Tearing up her apartment. Door wide open, but it's Gotham. I'm, at Nobody's this gonna point, I'm like, uh, you know, you got to assume that Gotham is a, you know, pretty crime infested uh, you city. Do. You do. But like no calls were made. Like yeah. she's making a racket. I wish I had those neighbors. <laughs> you, know you know better. You stay, you stay out of it at this point. You know what I mean? The you stay is, out of it. Yeah. I think that when you hear the scream, you, you, you turn to your significant other and go, should we call the police? But then when you hear the garbage disposal with knives and like, <laughs> going the fucking stuff. stuffed animals getting torn up. Yeah. We go, you know what? Let's just, let's just call yeah, this one. Let's call this one a wash. But then clean. I love it. She, you know, she gets the spray paint and sprays on the wall. Then she walks in her room and like, there's the hello there thing. and smashes the O oh, and Smashes the still on the nose, so or in the O. So it's just hell there, or hell yeah, here, hell, hell here. here. Uh, and then yeah, she smashes up her room, tears some stuff apart, gets in and gets the one like sexy leather coat she has after she fucks up her kitten T-shirt, and then she walks over to the sewing, gets her sewing stuff out and starts this making whole scene her cat. I um, was so over the top and campy in a way. That that's because it was. Like, it was. God, this is dumb. Look at her uh, spray one line of black spray like across two walls. A okay. fun fact, though, is that the um, the neon lights were actually um, a foreshadowing homage to Joel Schumacher's work for the next two films. Just hell. Just hell here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at also, the very end, we get a far, we get a wide shot of her saying, oh, right, Miss Kitty, I feel so much yebbier. And finding her new, like, you know, her she's no longer using the dead voice. She's using the Catwoman voice. And she's all, like, moving around, all silhouetted. Uh, from there, like we said, this movie moves very quickly. Uh, it's time to enact the plan here to get uh, Cobblepot uh, the access he deserves. So it's yet another press conference back at the Christmas tree thing with the fucking mayor. And he's just like, hey, listen, Gotham will not be lawless. This is We're going to stop this, your police. And then as he says this, another fucking crazy person comes out, this time a tumbler or whatever, grabs the mayor's baby from the mayor's wife, mm -hmm. pushes the mayor who does this. <laughs> Like if if it was Jen in holding Portillo and somebody We're grabbed throwing. Portillo and We're shoved me, I'm throwing. coming back at you. All right. And maybe I'm just not a fucking weak pussy like this fucking Jesus. Gotham mayor is. I'll say it. Cobblepot was right. This mayor doesn't have the You're stuff right. needed to run this city. Greg, Greg Miller does. You're so right, Greg. The the fact that nobody sitting around at this press conference doesn't stand up to do anything. We saw like three armed guards protect Bush when a guy threw a shoe at him. Like, the, like everybody just standing around, and, and they way. give him, they give him time to say his piece. With yeah, the I know. Baby <laughs> at the I one for speeches, a, so I'll just say thanks. Nobody thinks to. They're, they're like, oh, this is clearly part of the press conference. Everybody right. sitting there is like, oh, like uh, do something, man. I, I have crazy. a theory on that. I have a theory on that. You know how like you're in hour two of watching the Academy Awards, and the dude accepts the award for like best fucking shoe design, and you're like, nobody cares. And then he starts giving a really long speech. Yeah. And then you're like, oh my god. And then the next guy gets up, and goes, hey, I'm not really one for speeches, so I'll just say thanks. And everyone's like, thank you, thank you. We've been here for so long. This this has been so long that we just thank this guy uh while this is all happening uh cobblepot moves the uh or penguin moves the grate for the sewer bless so there's just a sewer tell paula bless you for us there's just an open you. sewer over there uh the dude grabs the baby does a million flips and then goes down the hole uh into the sewer he goes down there again all of these fucking yellow belly Gotham citizens gather around the hole. No one going down after him. You know what I mean? No one thinking to go down and try to stop this. This man's kidnapped a baby. They all just gather around it. Uh, down there, of course, the guy gives it to Penguin. And then they do a whole like, oh, no, it's the Penguin. Oh, God. Ah, ah. And then the Penguin's in his rubber ducky uh, car, which is fucking awesome. That lifts up and into a way where there's just no possible 
human way that the peng- that he could get close enough to the hole to come out of it in the duck, but it doesn't matter. Penguin rises out of the hole with the baby, and everybody's like, oh my god, it's the penguin, and it's the baby. And he's like, he gives it back to the mayor immediately. Bulbs are going off, flashbulbs going off, penguins like this. You know, being all penguin so funny. It. I love that. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Max Shrek, of course, is right there uh, with the mayor. Uh, they, you know, thank him. And it's this thing of like, he's look at this guy. What a great dude or whatever. He gives the press conference. The press conference switches over now listening to what the penguins got to say. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I live beneath you and I want to find my parents and yada, 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 yada. Uh, he might not say that part right there. But then we go back. Fucking Bruce Wayne, of course, is just sitting at home watching TV. If you're fucking Batman and they're doing a press conference, you get your ass to a gargoyle just and you watch. There. Just Something there. is going to happen. You know what I mean? Especially if the press conference is going to be, there's not going to be any more crime. That means they're about to be a crime at the press conference. Mm-hmm. This isn't hard, Bruce. Put it together. But I then again, know. I just, I just love you know the speech from Penguin being like, I just want to find my parents, and Bruce is like, oh, I hope he finds them. It's a really Problem weird solved. moment. Crisis yeah. averted. This guy seems like a pretty cool yeah. guy. Huh. But yeah, they set it all up right. Of like, yeah, the idea is that I just want to find my parents, man. I just want to be. I just want to find out where I came from. A chance to find out where I'm from. So from there, we jump over to the Hall of Records, where we're throwing a, a, a an officer out, or not an officer. We're throwing a journalist out of the Hall of Records. He's like, it's a public place, man. A First Amendment right. And Shrek comes out. And he's like, listen, man, keep give the Constitution a rest. This. Man, what about the right to find yourself? You know, I do a terrible, a terrible walk. Do it one more time. What, what about you can, the? You get it better. What the about? Kind of- Find yourself. Find yourself. Your family. Yeah, your go. roots. You know what I mean? Like, hey, wow, that's like a Al Pacino I, with I, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't do the impressions, Andy. There's a reason you do. There's a reason you do. Um. So yeah, you know. So they're like, all right, fine, fuck off. They all walk. It's Christmas time. They walk out, and Cobblepot's in there, just going through the paperwork, and he's looking over his shoulder, all shifty, like quite a bit, right? Because he's like, nah, I'm up to something or whatever. Uh, of course, Batman is like, mm, mm, I don't trust this. He's up, and he's he tells Alfred he's up to something. You know what I mean? And so what does Batman do? Just goes for a cruise. Just gets in the Batmobile, full, full suited up, drives by the Hall of Records. Doesn't intimidate what him. the living fuck was this scene? Like, why not? Doesn't intimidate him. Doesn't come up and be like, I know you're up to something. Just drives by the Hall of Records to be like, I want to see it with my own two eyes. And he drives by, he's like, yup, he is still in there looking at all the records. Okay. All right. Okay. Batman doesn't trust him. I guess that's confirmed or whatever. Uh, from there, we go to the graveyard and to the cobble pot graves where, yes, there it is. They are dead. Uh, he knew this already, of course, but he makes a big scene about it. He comes out. I forget, does anybody remember what the journalist asked? He was like, oh, man, it sucks. You'll never get to square up with him, right? And he's like, he has something he says here that's foreshadowing what he's going to do, right? I'm just like, yeah, I, don't, I, I would remember. ask them why they're doing the thing. It doesn't matter too much. This, this is what happens, right? Um, meanwhile, then, it's time to get back to Catwoman's story because this movie is not about Batman fucking at all. Uh, <laughs> we jump to now the streets of Gotham. People are excited about the Penguin. They're reading the newspapers. and They're like, man, what a swell guy. Uh, and then there's a woman getting held up at gunpoint or maybe just getting held up. I forgot if there's a gun or not uh, by some dude. And uh, this is when Catwoman makes her debut takes that guy out and like oh it was nothing more manly than fucking beating on a woman right and knocks him out and she's like oh man thank you and then she the cat woman shoves her up against the wall and is like dark, real quick you gotta fucking take uh, power over your own self you know what i mean we can't have mm-hmm. fucking have it be all the time waiting for fucking batman to save you fucking be it's you're the 90s be be the 90s woman meow um meow. she does say meow meow but hey. dude her her scra- like i love Catwoman, I fucking love in this movie. I love how obscene she is and ridiculous it all is. Yeah. But like her suit, the fact that she makes her own suit, we see that. It's like that didn't need to happen. But we do. And it's fucked up and there's stitches everywhere. And it's like super it. Tim Burton and creepy. But the fact that she has the kitty nails that are like blades. Like that shit is so yeah. fucking scary. And she cuts the guy's face. It's like, how did this movie get a PG-13 just- rating? She didn't just cut his face. She tic cut tic tac toe into his face, and the guy's like, "What the fuck?" It's like, insane, man. Oh, it's so fucking scary. Uh, I have no idea how they got a PG rating, by the way. From yeah, there, it's time for this Wednesday because this is the craziest thing. Is it's still fucking one day? Now it's time for the Wednesday meeting with Bruce Wayne. A lot of shit has happened overnight. <laughs> here. A lot of shit has happened in the morning, but we're still keeping the meeting. Uh, it's the Bruce Wayne uh, Christopher Walken meeting. And he walks uh, uh, Wayne in. He's like, I want to get you, I get you a cup of coffee, but, uh, you know, my secretary is on leave or whatever. Uh, they sit down and immediately, uh, you know, they start, Bruce calls him on his bullshit, has his own report that he's got made, throws it across the fucking room at him in this power play. And this is where they go. to. He's like, oh, you know, mayors, mayors come and go. Blue Bloods uh, tire out. Like, 
this is going to happen. Get on the right side of history. It's going to be my fucking legacy. And they kind of start jawing at each other and yelling at each other. And uh, he's like, oh, if my assistant was here, I'd have her escort you out of the building. And Selena Kyle walks in and Chip's all like amazed too. Like, well, I thought I thought my dad killed this woman last night. And then Walken's all amazed too. But then Bruce Wayne's immediately like, this chick is hot. Like, I like what I'm seeing here. And I like this weird dead eyed attitude she's got going on. This is my style. The horniness of this movie knows no ends. Like, yeah. like Penguin is just. <laughs> Oh my God! Right, like a time. horn ball, the like the time. entire time. Like it's just ridiculous. But mm-hmm. Batman, Batman, it, both as Batman and Bruce Wayne, there's no difference. It's just like all reason just goes away because Catwoman's hot. It's a fucking bizarre choice. Yeah, it, it is yeah. weird because especially later in the movie where we witness her kind of um, help kill the Ice Princess or the, the whatever the, whatever that that character's name yeah, is the beauty passing it doesn't and then he's just like we're well, gonna make out a little bit like i'm okay with it like penguin really did the killing you just kind of helped a she little felt bit. bad we saw her feel bad and i feel like batman felt he gets she it. felt bad you know what i mean <laughs> it's one where, of things, where, it's like where do you feel it kev in his, wiener, in his, in his, his cowl wiener, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that all happens. Uh, she does escort him out. He's befuddled in the elevator when, he, when, but he's trying to set up a date with her, right? Um, I'm going. Oh, I'm going down or whatever. And that, that's the end of that one. From there, then it's um back to the penguins' uh, new lair, where it's him upstairs in this thing, and then across the way is all the gang. The gang is just there. I have no idea how the world doesn't see the gang there, but they're all there in the corner just chilling out, waiting for the Penguin to do his thing because he's going through his paperwork shit. Um, Shrek shows back up. He comes back up the, uh, the uh, uh, not the elevator, the rotating stairs here. What do you call it? Circular stairs? Mm-hmm. Circular stairs. Spiral, stairs. Spiral, Spiral staircase. Spiral staircase. Thank you. Uh, and he's in Penguin's like, he puts on his stuff, and Shrek's trying to coax him out. And he's got a fish. He he's did like, Come that. With me. He did go. Rah. He does that a lot. Yeah, he does yeah. that a lot. I got a surprise for you, kind of thing. He also and he was brings him down. Out by, uh, or coaxed down the stairs by, by fish. a fish. Yeah. I hated uh, that. I hated that eats, because. And he eats the entire next seed, and it's so alarming. Disgusting. It's so fucking weird. Like, that that was a choice in this movie that, like, I just feel like doesn't, like, that takes the camp to an extent that, like, mm-hmm. doesn't, isn't backed up by the rest of the movie. Where that scene of these normal human beings in this place are looking at him do this, and they're all just fully supporting him. But see, like, I just, that's, I feel like that's Chuck to, like, oh, they're getting paid to, like, ignore all his issues like he bites a dude's nose off yeah that was and yeah. like Fine. no one no one makes a big deal about it like he then Good. hits on a woman right no yeah they, they freak out a tiny bit kevin but yeah like uh, to me this would be a call the cops this man's insane like it, no he's just andy come on God. if it happens on the office it happens in the office we'll figure it out don't don't involve the cops Greg was the was the woman the other the other like PR person Jan Hooks the Jan Hooks Jan Hooks from SNL yeah God bless Jan Hooks man oh yeah just, yeah God bless her so yeah everything you just said happens they bring her down he eats the fish he, uh, it, somehow beneath him they the built fish. an entire uh, cobble pot for mayor thing uh, now granted I would have loved to have seen Penguin get made over yeah what, I thought that know, was what, interesting what does that look yeah. like you know like give him a little haircut maybe just like a full body surgery <laughs> like, put him in a tuxedo. <laughs> My favorite, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, that's they make that fun joke here, right? Where they're like, "Take back your your roots," and they give them the, the you know, the the yeah, the birthright, right? And they give them the old cig- cigarette in the cigarette holder, like uh, from the '66 episode, and he or whatever penguin he wears it for, like or has it in his mouth for like two seconds and spits it out spits along it with out. a bunch of the fish. Um, As if to say, no, I am not the '66 penguin. He did I'm wear his little. Penguin. He did wear his uh, one piece monocle up there, though. I like yeah. that a lot. The '66 um, penguin. Uh, how do you say his name? Berg Burgess. Burgess, Burgess Meredith. Meredith. Burgess Meredith. Uh, he was asked to be the penguin's dad for this oh. movie, but he was too sick to be able to do it. Oh, Aww. that sucks. That would have been awesome. Right now, if you guys ever want to see Burgess Meredith in his in in his just prime, cut you the fuck down. Watch Grumpy Old Men. He is the best in that. He plays their oh dad. Oh my god! He's I never so thought about that. How's the sequel? Good. Grumpy good. Old Grumpy actually, Old Man. Grumpy oh, actually, Grumpy Old Man is good too. Yeah, I don't want to watch this. Is that the movie. same as? Wait, what's his Gone Fishing? No, those no, that's that's a, that's a <laughs> Joe Pesci and Danny Glover movie. Grumpy Old Men was Walter Matthau and Jack Lemon, Lemon. who were um, re, kind of reprising their odd couple role, but as old dudes. 
And then uh, Burgess Meredith plays, I believe, Jack Lemmon's dad. And he's great. He just gives him shit the entire I saw, time. And it's great. I saw both of these movies in theaters. Don't ask me why. Like, I don't know who I was. I mean, that's how movies. it was, man. That's, that's what fun. we used to do as kids. We used to go see all sorts of weird ass <laughs> movies. I, remember, I, I saw these in theaters, too. It, it was one of those, Greg, where like, you know, dude, it, it's summer and everybody's working. So I just went to go see it with like my aunt and my yeah. cousins. or so. It was one of those weird ass movies. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, and like you said, so he's down there. He spits the fish. He totally wants to fuck Jan Hooks. He talks about that over and over again. Bites that dude's nose. Uh, then on his way back up, yeah, like you're, you're, what is it? You're the coolest. Yeah, you're the coolest role model a young person could have. And he's like, well, you're the hottest young person a role, a role model, model could have. <laughs> have a button, and he like fixes it to her breast all awkwardly. Such a and he, I like way. everybody else around her. Like no reaction. They're just like, yeah, this is great. Yeah, like, this is guy. Well, he's weird. He came from the sewers, but he saved a baby. He's cool. Uh, he also Shrek and him also go through the whole thing of like, wait, this ha- elections happen in November. This is late December, and he's like, ah, things change. You know, this, this is you know clearly there's going to be some shit going on. And he's like, what do you? Mean? he's like let's get law and disorder in the streets you know what i mean like it's just the disorder part uh and so he's like oh you want me to let my uh goons from upstairs the red triangle gang run rampant on gotham he's like yeah show the mayor has no balls as we already know because he couldn't even save his own child uh and then we can get a recall thing going we could get you put in as mayor you could restore law and order and he's like this is a great plan we're in uh, from there, Selena Kyle, uh, a.k.a. Catwoman, begins her big thing. And so, of course, as we'll find out at the end, she goes, you know, a, a, a death for a death, right? Or a kill for a kill or whatever she says. And that's a great plan. But she decides to start differently where she just wants to fuck up Shrek's department store. So she shows up as Catwoman at the Shrek department store. And we get the cool thing of her on the glass with the cat face in front of her. And then she drags her nails to make the screechy noises. She goes in there and she's fucking up mannequins. Uh, she's tearing shit down. The guy show up, like we said, our take home is only 300. You're overpaid. Get out of here. Uh, she eventually grabs some paint. Uh, spray paint puts that into a microwave closes that door punches through a thing tears it out opens up the gas gas is filling uh meanwhile outside uh yeah the red triangle gang's fucking up everything they're there they're going crazy and just you know being the red triangle gang or whatever uh batman shows up again he fucks them up and does all this different stuff uh at one point batman turns and guess what there's the penguin himself and he's like oh you're just fucking here to see your handiwork and he because we've already talked about at this point like the thing i already talked about with the microfiche where he's like oh clearly this is uh you know the fucking penguin boy from the the circus Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm just a concerned citizen here surveying, you know, future mayor sur- surveying the crime scene. You're not the mayor. Things change. Uh, you don't th- you don't really think you'll win. He- Penguin asked Batman. Things change. Uh, and so they're having this little tit for tat uh, there with the wordplay. And out of the fucking Shrek's department store, right? Catwoman comes doing her many, 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 many flips we were talking about earlier. And she gets there and comes up. <sighs> and like, they both look at her and, and she goes. Yeah, <laughs> blows up everything because you know the microwave and the gas and all that stuff we were talking about earlier. Um, from there, Batman's distracted, Penguin's distracted, uh, Catwoman takes off, and Penguin's like, I saw her first, gotta fly. And one of his umbrellas turns into a helicopter, and he goes up there. I Batman, love that. Sta- Batman stands around like a fucking moron. Like, oh, that was oh. always really cool to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, I forget, is uh, Penguin catches up to Catwoman here, or no? We just go straight to the Batman Catwoman fight. This is straight to the Batman Catwoman fight, right? Probably. Yeah. So Batman, he ascends the building. Catwoman's there. She kicks him in the face. Uh, she starts giving him the old what for. Finally, Batman's like, I've had enough. Punches her. She goes down. She's like, I, I can't believe you'd hit a woman. And Batman's like, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. I'm fine. Ah, and she kicks him again. She's like, no, you didn't let me finish. I can't believe you'd, you know, whatever. And she has a whole little monologue there about it. It was like, like, I need an ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, call an ambulance, but not for me. Uh, doing, I'm sure, what is Tim's favorite fight scene in uh, continuing the tradition of 89. She just kicks him a bit backwards and he just falls over the side all awkwardly. And he's hanging on. And then we have some kind of weird, like, somebody just watched their first skate video before this. It's like this weird fisheye lens of Batman hanging there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's cool, whatever. Shot. Also, what's weird is that they don't they don't want to show the sky at all. So you don't have a sense of how what the hell's going on here, where this rooftop is. Because I think they didn't want to shoot Gotham like... City. Gotham City in the background because it would have been too hard to do the map painting. So you end up just shooting up or down the entire time. And so it's very confusing. Then he like punches her. She falls backward, but then forward over the thing somehow. And then they all fall onto the thing. And well, he, he does. He takes it. He shakes up. He has like, oh, like you know right. what? He what I have is a container of acid. 
my last ditch effort to fucking really burn and hurt people. <laughs> and he throws that up <laughs> and explodes on her arm. Yeah, which then he's gets up or off the rope and then she goes over the side and she lands in the kitty litter. That's right. And that's when she's like, saved by kitty litter and looks at her like, damn it. Because he fucked did up the we, Did we, I'm sorry, did you mention the No, please. In, that was in, in uh, when they first met where he goes, I'm sorry, I mistook me for someone else. No, I didn't mention that, but that, that his whole befuddled nature of dealing with well, Selena but Kyle I love the, of getting that hard bone. There's a couple different moments where they both, each of the characters, say something like that. So he said, I mistook me for someone else. He's like, I, we've met before, right? And she goes, I don't think we have. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, I mistook me for someone else. Not, I mistook you for someone else. Because when he met her, he was Batman. Yeah. Mm. Not Bruce Wayne. Right. I, just, yeah, I yeah, love yeah, those, little yeah. tiny, those little tiny things. She has something like that later, too, where she says, like, something to that degree of, like, because they don't know who each other's alter egos are. Anyway, sure. Sorry, continue. Well, I mean, we're, you know, we're combining a whole bunch of stuff. You're doing great. Don't worry. Uh, okay. This is also the whole thing where we had the them brawling around, her getting on top of him, mistletoe is deadly if you eat it. And then also, where's, where are you? Where are you? The real you. And she stabs him in the side with her little cat uh, fingernail. Before giving him the kiss. Does yeah, she give him yeah. the kiss here? Is this the kiss? Where she, goes, well, she licks ah, his face. Yeah. She licks his bat nose too. Yeah. Um, nose. He goes and home. Then, he pulls he that kinda, out. And, and then Bruce Wayne's sitting there. He kind of like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like he, can, yeah, he does he, he does, does yeah do when he that. when he goes back and reflects on it right he does that yeah. thing um from Dude, there we're back boner, but it was too constricting yeah uh, he was fighting hard for the rest of that fight was he right? like, oh, you think he's a little yeah oh jesus uh, Sorry, yeah yeah from there we're back at oswald hq where oswald comes back from something i guess actually here's where he puts the button on the girl uh it doesn't matter though uh he comes upstairs they're like penguin or oswald somebody's here to see you and it's catwoman laying in his bed and he's like oh fuck here we go and you want to uh, back to the horny nature of this movie tim you can take this away is the from. horny i'm just saying this is the horniest part like this entire thing it's just like okay so you're both extremely horny and inappropriate and I, I, this whole scene made me uncomfortable a lot of this movie made me uncomfortable and i think that's the combination between tim burtonness and uh horniness those things sure. combined can be I a powerful thing like someone else famous being called tim i think that's probably a big part of it but i don't want to get into it but yeah, there's a whole horny thing here. Is this where she says semi hard too? Where she's talking about yes. like, yeah, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you kiss this a nice euphemism there. Yeah. Uh they they do a lot of <laughs> if it isn't my the just the pussy I was looking for, like, damn, they're all over this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're making this thing that you're 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 a parent and you can bring your kid and they can have fun, but you're a parent and you can also be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking jerk off later. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like that. And if five, you're Paul Rubens, you, you, exactly. you can do it at the same time. You can do the same time. Let's all go to the theater later. There's also that infamous line later where Penguin's like, I just came in my pants. There's also that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they set up this thing that Batman is uh, their villain. We need to work together. We need to make him into what he hates the most, namely us. Uh, then, yeah, a plan is forming. Uh, this is also the thing where she puts the bird in her mouth, which was real. He goes to stab the cat. Uh, they bicker and banter. She doesn't want to fuck him. She gives herself a bath at the end, which is weird, too. But she's really into the cat part of this Catwoman portrayal um from there it's the day of the actual event that the because it's the relighting of the tree which again batman it's clearly going to be bad it's clearly going to be bad batman you should probably be there there? for this giant event um however instead he runs into her on the street selena kyle runs in or bruce wayne runs into selena kyle uh they talk for a little bit he, she's weird and in and out of it. He's still in love with her, or at least horny with her. And he's like, "Let's, you know what? Are you going to this thing?" She's like, "No, maybe later. I don't know." And he's like, "I want to be caught dead there. Come over to my uh, place. We'll have dinner. We'll have an early dinner. Five o'clock, six o'clock, five o'clock." Uh, and but she's like, "I gotta go." I'm like, "All right, cool." Because even Catwoman knows she has to be there, but she still wants to go do this. And it's just interesting why she would. You guys, know, it's tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow, Bruce. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got something really important to do tonight. Tomorrow we'll do this. We'll do this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Let me just celebrate killing the Ice Princess and framing Batman. Let me have yeah. some fun here. Come on. Uh, instead, though, she goes to Bruce Wayne's place. Uh, again, they have this thing where it parallels the Vicky Vale date, but it's the entire time awkward. And I think that's well done and interesting in terms of like being so close to it, but also because we've seen Bruce actually have a nice normal r- person over and how that mm-hmm. would go and what he wants to find in that. But you can you see that not working out at all here with uh selena as she continues to go off the rails well the uh, important the important thing too is that it didn't work out with vicky vale because in the it, excuse given couldn't well, reconcile yeah they couldn't reconcile the duality of like which who is was in batman well oh, this is one of the f- things i do want to give this conversation a shout out for is that it always drove me crazy as a kid who loved comic books so much seeing any movie in any sequel and not having 
resolution for what happened to the relationship right. or event from before. So I always thought it was cool that they brought this up here and eventually reference it again when he's given Alfred shit, which of course I hated do. it. I hated yeah. it so much. Like, cause I, I agree with you where it's like, I don't like when movies just don't make reference to things, but it's just like, they spend way too long in the most awkward way possible to talk about Vicky Vale. Hey, uh, do you have a girlfriend? Why would anybody, let alone Bruce Wayne, answer the question the way he did? It was fucking bizarre. It was they were opening up to head. each other, bro. They were opening up to each other, and that's how it worked. Apparently, um, the the movie was written as a direct sequel to the '89 Batman, but but I think Tim Burton and Bo- and Keaton were like, we don't want to do that. We want to just have this be more of a standalone movie. I think specifically Keaton wanted that, so they changed it because I guess they were going to get Vicky Vale back, and they were it was going to deal with like them getting married and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, nobody no. wants to see that. And he's people just want to see me be Batman, and that's why I kind of like, like cool. It. We won't really do that in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but that's why i kind of like these scenes with with selena kyle because they're written completely polar opposite where she does challenge him and she's like remember when he says well vicky and she goes vicky was she a stewardess or a, a, a whatever like she just has that shitty little line just that little jab at her name and you're like oh man selena kyle is not fucking around man she's got a sharp edge to her uh but yeah then she you know about the dual duality and not being able to reconcile and she's like Ew. selena's like was she right and he's like oof i don't know how to answer that because if i do then i'm a psycho or whatever right or a weirdo or i forget what he says and she's like well it's you know always I'm, i like psychos like the weirdos or normal people are always the ones who let you down or whatever and then you know, if i answer that one way you won't let me kiss you and then she pounces on him they get this fun Catwoman bat batman scene of them both not knowing each other's identities right where they start making out of the couch and she reaches around his side to caress him right but he's like oh that's where i just got stabbed by you last night he pulls her arm up here and then he goes back on her arm revealing the acid burn she's like oh this and she pulls back she's like, i got this is not right like uh you know what uh blah blah, blah. i gotta get out of here he's like wait I, oh, while she pulls back the report on tv starts right because what it, the other plane of action my apologies was that the ice princess or ice queen which we can no longer remember was in her dressing room and they just want to play her up for no reason just that she's a complete bimbo and doesn't know anything and she can't understand turning on the tree so she's reading the notes and making a joke about that penguin shows up with his goons and uh the batarang right she's like oh what is that a camera and he's like yeah she trees and fucking knocks her out that scene then was so violent yeah like and there wasn't even a uh, but there was maybe it's just like the audio mix, but I don't feel like there was a really loud impact hit. No, I from think the it, thing. It, I think it was meant to cut before that, like at as Got it. it's okay. towards her. Yeah, oh, but okay. uh, I just really didn't understand like what what I is she dead or is it just like an injury? Is it a wig? I don't know. You know, uh, <laughs> she she is just uh, for clarity. She is in fact the Ice Princess. Yeah, thank princess. you very much yeah okay like that's uh, on the subtitle as well like like they just commit to her being the ice princess they call her in the movie and i just love that in a batman movie where there's all these villains and villainesses and all the shit there's a character named the ice princess that is not what you think not all. related to mr freeze at all yeah um also, so I that wanna, i want to just go back to that line by the way where she goes the, the nice guys always let you down but she goes at least the crazy ones you know they're committed crazy ones yeah yeah Remember, I, I just always love that. Like, like, she's got all sorts of humor about her psychosis. I Committed, you know, funny. Uh, anyways, like I said, she pulls back. The, <laughs> they were going to watch the tree lighting, so the tree lighting gets interrupted by Bolton. It is, of course, Commissioner Gordon uh, there. And I don't think this is usually how police investigations go, but he has the evidence of the ongoing investigation that has just started two seconds ago because the Ice yeah. Princess is gone. He's, and they're like, is it Batman? He's like, I don't know. We got this bloody batarang, though. We don't know what's fucking going on yeah, yet, but I thought I'd tell everybody. Really thought I'd stir up some anti-Batman stuff here. And as a full timeout, I don't think this works out, but it might work out. Tim, in all of your research for Easter eggs, not I don't think it's actually this scene. It might be the first time they go to a, 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 a press conference or whatever, but one of the many things we see on TV, I feel like the narrator who like walks us into it or like you know the anchor who's like, and now we join, whatever it is, live – Sounds a lot like the guy who did the Batman 66. Like, will the Cape Crusader get out of this? Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Do you know if it was mm-hmm. that guy? Did anybody, I didn't, is that an Easter egg? Anybody that. heard about that? No, no, no. I didn't bother to look it up, but he sounded like he was not doing the full-blown radio voice, but he was doing it. And again, it's not every scene, so don't do the thing y'all do where you clip out one very specific thing where it's a, like a woman talking. Like, you're an idiot, Greg. You're an idiot for trying to get me. All right? Nobody yeah. will ever get me, Kevin. They'll never find the weapons. Not again. 
anyways, uh, they see this and they both have to get the run. So Bruce is like, you stay here. I'll go do the thing. And all the, they, they're both terrible at excuses. Uh, but he runs into Alfred. He's like, make up an excuse. I want a business. This is the business, blah, 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 blah. And he runs away, but he goes the wrong way. And, and uh, Alfred directs him the right way. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's right. And then Selena comes over and she's like, hey, Alfred, I got to go. Can you say, oh, don't say that, dude, blah, blah, blah. You have a dirty limerick. And he's like, one has just sprung to mind. And she's like, great. And then she tries to go the wrong way and he sends her out the wrong way. And Weird. then this is where. Weird. Uh, this yeah. is where we get the scene you were talking about earlier, right? With like going into the water, hitting the button, going into the sarcophagus, making the joke about Vicky, you know, who showed Vicky Vale the Batcave, you know. And meanwhile, we get to see Bruce go through his uh, suit up process and how intense and uh, thought out it is. And then we have that juxtaposed with Catwoman's process of driving her little Volkswagen Beetle and trying to put on her outfit in the car as she drives and stuff. So you have some funny funnies and guffaws there as one does. Um, it's now uh, the they're they're doing the conference or they're not doing the conference. I forget something's going on over there. But it's the whole thing we said where Batman gets on scene, right? And he looks over and sees the Ice Queen, uh, no, uh, the Ice Princess, in a warehouse. He goes in there to save her. She's tied to a chair. She's like, he's like, oh, this is frame to make me look like I did this. She's like, don't worry, I'll tell him. Just a guy with a bird in bad breath grabbed me or whatever. And then as that happens, Catwoman shows up and she's like, meow again. She's cracking the whip and she gets a chair. She throws the ice princess off the chair and she's got the chair. And she's like, ah, blah blah blah. And uh, she's talking shit to Batman as always or whatever. Um, she grabs the princess. She knocks Batman down. I guess at one point, grabs the princess, runs upstairs. Uh, Batman I, I do comes love really quick. He just like headbutts the shit out of her. And yeah. she just like slowly grabs his head, fucking knees him. <laughs> like it's like the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just, they're letting it happen, right? They're I, letting yeah. fight happen. That was a fun fight, and like there's a moment where he's like, "You look hungry. Have some fiber." And he th- shoves. No, no, eat, 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 eat floor, eat, eat floor, high right? fiber, <laughs> high <laughs> fiber. Yeah. Yeah. So bad. While all this is happening, the Penguin goons have uh, gone in and are fucking with the Batmobile. They've figured out how to repeal the shields. They're going in there installing all the stuff uh, that uh, they need or whatever. We didn't mention this earlier, but their their original plan was to turn the Batmobile into a giant bomb. bomb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And and that's when Catwoman's like, yeah, no, no, you can't. uh, turn. Don't kill him. He'll be a martyr. Instead, turn him into what he hates us. Um... Batman runs on upstairs. Uh, he gets up there, and the ice prince, the queen, ice princess, princess, is there on the side there. And she's like, "She let me go. I think it's because we had some girl talk or whatever the fuck she says." <laughs> this actress is perfect in this role, by the way. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> I she's like, great. I was like, "You're nailing this." Uh, meanwhile, he's like, "All right, well, get you know, just stand still. I'll come save you or instead of just, hop, just, just fucking hop, hop forward. Off the just hop. Just Why, hop off if the you ledge. left alone, hop off the ledge? Yep. What could Catwoman have said? Uh, but w- before any of that can happen." Penguin's like javelin, throws in a javelin. It's it's, it's a, a, lawn dart. An umbra- lawn a lawn dart. dart. <laughs> Umbrella. It opens up. Bats fly out. She flips out. She falls to her death. Batman doesn't use any of his gadgets to try to grab her or do anything with it. Doesn't jump after her either. She falls. Of course, falls perfectly onto the button. Lights up the tree, which then sends out all these bats. Tons and tons of bats come out, and everybody's like, "Oh, it's fucking Batman! Batman did this! Oh no!" And they're like, "Ah, oh, we knew we couldn't trust him." Greg, before the bats came out of the tree, there was an air of doubt. People were like, "I don't know. I see Batman up there, and I see the other bats, but I don't know if there's anything really tying him to her falling off." And then the bats sure. come out of the tree, and they're like, "Guilty! Put him yeah. in the electric chair." Guilty, so, guilty. But, uh, but even though they saw the bats, and they were like, "You know what? I still have my suspicions. I'm not sure." And then the bats are like. We belong to Bruce Wayne, and they're like, "Ah, damn it, oh. Bruce!" And they're like, "We're gonna need, we're gonna need one or all of you to testify." And one of the red like, <laughs> puts a little paw print down in blood. And he's like, "I will sign that." <laughs> and he killed everyone. Uh, so she falls off, and yeah. he doesn't try to do anything. Not at all. He she's literally not. just watches it happen. Even yeah. though moments later, we'll find out he's got wings that help him float, that like really down, cool. right? Really cool wing, glider wings, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. So that all happens in yeah. Batman jumps off with the cool glider wings through the bats, just really making himself look guilty here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just think of optics for a second, Bruce, on anything you're doing, but he doesn't. Uh, he's going to his car, which they've finished uh, fucking with. But up, up top, uh, Penguin and Catwoman are sharing a celebratory toast of like, "Hey!" And I don't even remember. I was funny watching this. I didn't even remember this. Uh, Hey, we did it. Congratulations. And then Penguin proposes. Like, he has a ring, and he's like, hey, yeah, we should get married, and this is the whole thing. And Catwoman's like, I'm not marrying you, you Penguin. And he's like, all right, fuck you. you. Put the, <laughs> puts a fucking umbrella around her neck, and that lifts her off, like, taking her up into sky where she's going to die. Well, she has that rhyme moment. anymore, guy. She has that moment, too, where she was like, hey, you just said we were going to scare her. And he's like, yeah. she did look scared, right? 
<laughs> Got him. And then, yeah, uh, she, that, that thing, that, yeah. the, the way he did that, I thought looked really cool. And yeah, it was a 100%. good use of his little gadget there. Yeah. Uh, Batman uh, gets back to the car, gets in the car, and as soon as the lid closes on the Batmobile, Penguin pops up on the, the camera and is like, welcome to Hell Ride or something like that. He uses Hell somewhere in there. Whatever. And he's like, I'm going to fuck this whole thing up. And he's in his little Winnebago at this point, too, where he's got a little uh, Batmobile like kitty car ride, which is cute. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, yeah, he starts driving through the streets like a maniac, and he's, you know, pancaking cop cars and taking people out and doing all this different stuff. And there's explosions and there's cool shit and Penguin's screaming and f- fussing. And I want to give a shout out right now to the kind of funny community because if you remember back in the day when we could go to a studio because there wasn't a global pandemic when i would read twitch subs i used to have a camera on me the kev cam and i remember the day where i did it and i laughed in somebody's face and i said something uh, offensive and somebody edited it into this where batman punches it thank you very much where uh we're going it was hilarious andy you have a question it's 1992 yeah and they're like how do we impress this audience let's have bruce wayne bust out a cd Oh yeah. my god! And jam that into the CD player. Man, he's got to record. I don't know what reason. <laughs> and he's got to record it. Scratch on it. <laughs> you don't understand, but back in '92, the idea of having a readable, writable CD, like unheard CD of, ROM, was just come on, dude. You were a fucking billionaire. Come you know, on, that technology. Dude. So it wasn't bizarre. Literally, so bizarre for him to be panicking and being like, "Fuck, let me grab this CD. Let me jam Batman. This, he's Batman. Let me jam in this mixtape and also pull out some wires from the." It was so funny. That's dude. why you're not Batman. So he's he's tearing apart the car trying to find the device. Uh, the wires are hanging down. Eventually, the thing identifies where the thing is. He punches through the floor, yanks that shit off. Uh, all is well that ends well, right? Not uh, as he's driving uh, the car is you know he's gonna lose the cops by going down this very narrow alleyway he has. Uh, and so he flips the switch to make the Batmobile go into like cannonball mode, but it doesn't work. And he's like, oh, no. And he flips, flips it and he's hitting stuff together. And finally, it, everything falls apart. The car goes into a little tunnel, leaves the cops behind. He's able to escape and get back to the Batcave safely. Now I'm worried, right? Yeah, now I'm worried. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Uh, anyone uh, I'm shocked at how absolutely easy it was for him to punch through the flooring of the Batmobile? <laughs> it was bizarre. <laughs> it was bizarre. Yeah. He's I mean, strong, it's just Kevin. probably an aluminum flooring. Kevin, when you get to one of your cars today, see how hard it is for you to punch floor through the, the flooring. Nick, I've, I've definitely tried it multiple times. I've removed carpet. Like it as a, is, as a, Once you get as under a, that layer, it is metal. Like a yeah. quarter inch is too much, but like no, somewhere around there. And this is the Batmobile. <laughs> yeah. But he's got gloves. From there, uh, it's the next day. And like I said, this movie moves really quickly. So Cobblepot is, is giving a speech to his supporters here about how he's going to clean up the town. He's going to do all these different things. Bruce and Alfred start watching it upstairs. This is where they do the whole thing with the th- the, the the underwater in the, the spiky box and make fun of Vicky. They start upstairs knowing this is going to happen, then casually go down there, totally banking on this conference going longer than you you normally should. They get downstairs. Like we said, they have the CD. They play the CD. It starts playing the things where uh, all the horrible shit Penguin said about the idiots in Gotham and how he's going to fuck up this town or whatever. And then, yes, he scratches it like a record, which is not how CDs work. We didn't know that in the 90s. And this is where everybody's like, you know what? Penguin actually sucks. He sucks, and now we know it. So they th- start throwing tomatoes and cabbage at him. Penguin God, they turn on umbrella. him fast. Oh, totally. It's Gotham. Uh, then he shoots uh, He shoots a bit to get them all to drop. Shrek walked away, and Shrek did one of these. Like, when it was when the jig was up, he's like, mm, sorry, man. It sucks to be you. Um, he The Penguin shoots for a while. He's all angry. He's like, Why does someone always bring an egg? <laughs> yeah. Tomatoes and eggs, yeah, yeah, the thing or whatever. Um, from there, Penguin goes back uh, to his base, and he walks right, and he, like the actual aquatic base, though, right. And he walks in there, and they're like, uh, "Yeah," he's like, "Hey, hey, Cobblepot," and he's like, "I'm not a Cobblepot. I'm the Penguin. I'm not a man. I'm a monster." Or whatever. And he fucking leans into that whole shit about what he's gonna do there, and they're like, "All right, cool. I feel like I'm combining scenes here, aren't I?" Doesn't matter. All right. It's well, a, then it, a, it, it, he goes back down and tells people, ah, fuck it. I'm, I'm not a man. I'm an animal, which is the opposite of like the elephant man speech. And then he's like, let's let's do what we got. We came here to do people. Let's steal their firstborns. Tonight. Yeah, he's like, we're, in, we're executing the plan. We're stealing the kids. That's what we're going to do. While all the people are at Shrek's big party tonight, we're going to go around and steal Gotham's firstborns. Uh, and no reason at all. There's the one dude that's like, hey, um, that's kind of too much. No right? reason at all. That's great. I love that. I love that where I he's know, like, hey, ki- st- killing kids. He's like, that's a bit much. And Penguin just immediately shoots him dead. He falls into the water dead over there. And uh, I really no, like it's a lot. Uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, that yeah. Would, 
I'd say that was the most shocking scene, I think, where it just felt like a little too murderous. Like, we saw a dude get torched, but it was still Batman in his Batmobile. We saw we saw people get killed in a lot of different ways. But the idea that Penguin just, like, to his own dude, just like, fuck you for getting mad. Like, his body falls into the water. It, it, it was really, like, gruesome and shit. So bad for him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the plan's enacted now. We know why he was gathering the names. We know what's going on, right? Uh, from there, we jump to Shrek's party. It's it's this giant gala costume party. As we already said, uh, Bruce and Selena are the only people who show up not in costumes. I really um, appreciate that this movie has so much going on and it moves so fast that they kind of just expect us to forget about the fact that Shrek killed Selena Kyle and then Selena Kyle comes back to talk to him and is clearly pretty crazy. And Shrek's just kind of like, Eh, whatever. I mean, he he I'll invite moment. her to the party. He has that solid yeah. moment where he was like, if she tries to blackmail her, I'll kill her for good. And then yeah. Goes, I'll good. drop her out. I'll throw her out a higher window. window. Yeah. Oh, higher window. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. either of them were, were really expecting to go to the party, which is why they didn't have outfits. That's why they didn't have costumes. Because he wasn't going to go and she wasn't going to go. I don't, I don't even think she was invited. And that's why when they show up, they're just in evening gowns. Like, he, like obviously, Shrek has yeah. that mo- that quick moment of panic. But after that, I'd be like, what are we going to do? We got to fucking yeah, figure totally. this out. We need like, to handle this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he believes her amnesia line from the reintroduction of Selena Kyle, right? When she's sure. like, I have amnesia. And I remember Sister Mary puking in church. And this time, I didn't wear underwear to school. But this one boy noticed. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about, Michelle Pfeiffer? Um, anyways, like I said, they, oh, before then, even we have a little bit with Walken and Keaton where he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, fucking guy went to jail. He's like, I didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, then, yes, yeah, Selena Kyle shows up. They start dancing. Uh, you know, it's this whole thing where back to what you were talking about earlier, Nick, of like, is she crazy? Isn't she crazy? How does, you know, what is actually going on? And this is one of her lucid moments where she's like, you know, she'd love to be happy with him or whatever. You'd just be happy. She can't. She, so castle. she's going to kill Shrek and she pulls out the gun and Bruce grabs it. Of course, like it, it isn't the normal Batman where you think a normal Batman would have a lot more to do with this gun. Uh, but he grabs it and they're talking and she starts crying and she's kind of losing it, but she's in and out of it. And finally she looks up and sees the mistletoe and says, mistletoe, you know, mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. And he says in her ear, a kiss can be even deadlier if and they both realize, pull away, then run back to each other. And I, sh- I love that line of her like, Do we, does this mean we have to start fighting? Like, yeah. what, what is it to be a good guy and a bad guy, right? Um, and so he's like, I don't know, let's get out of here to figure it out. But before they can really make their move, poof, giant explosion in the center. It's the penguin coming up in his giant rubber ducky. Uh, he, 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 for some reason, comes up to tell everybody his plan of, Listen, while you're here partying and drinking, we're out stealing your firstborns. This is how it's going to be. And I want to start with Gotham's number one firstborn, Chip. Chip Shrek. Get in the fucking... Pe- the, the dad, da- dad, run. Save yourself. Dad, run. Save yourself. That's my Chip. They should have cast you as Chip. Uh, <laughs> instead... Uh, is that what Chip sounded like? He sounded a little bit like a higher-pitched walk-in to me. Huh. In here. That's how I read the way. character. All right. Uh, I didn't notice that. It was good, Nick. That was good. Thanks, guys. Then, yeah, this is it. where uh, they do the thing, and it's like, uh, yeah, uh, you threw me. Uh, no, walk in. Yeah, okay. So, no, don't take Chip. Take me. I'm the one who fucked you over, right? Why wouldn't you want me? And Penguin showing he has no real plan in mind. He's like, yeah, sure, good enough. Good reason. Yeah, Get the fucking thing. Like, wait, no, take his son if he loves his son. But does he even love his son? Maybe he only loves Geraldo, the Chihuahua. Nobody will ever know. They take him. Uh, then Selena looks around for Bruce. Bruce is gone because, of course, Bruce is now out to stop all of this action. This is where a whole bunch of stuff all happens at once, right? So we have the the. Well, just to put it here, the train is out there capturing the kids with the guy who died in two thousand five from Ghost, uh, and he has a monkey, and he doesn't have the monkey in this scene. Uh, yes, he does have the monkey in this scene. Uh, Batman <laughs> sh- Shadow Bob pops up. Kind of sh- funny in review, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a lot of these <laughs> kids are not fighting back. I hope it goes you, down. What do you, what do, you do? The adults say to get in the fucking thing. You get the thing, I hope if Paula Paula ever gets abducted, I hope that she's in there trying to figure out how to break out of this cage. You know, Paula Paula and Remedy. Sure. Yeah. That brought Nick so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it's been accepted. It's eventually to be canon. Recently, uh, uh, never mind. Batman's there. He breaks. He breaks this guy's face or whatever. Gets him out. We don't really see that much. Uh, then Penguin back at HQ gives a stirring speech to his penguins so they have rockets on their back explosive on their back he sends them out because they're going to go down to gotham square and just blow up gotham i love it it's su- yeah it sucks that they couldn't get more penguins to make it a practical effect you know this uh but they had people in suits it was fine 
Were they people in suits? I thought they were like paintings or something. I don't know. They looked, they looked for, for the, the penguins or for the um the backgrounds. The penguins were a combination of actual penguins, people in suits, and then animatronics. The the I'm talking about the penguins when he's having the speech. So he's talking to the auditorium full of penguins. I mean, I assume those are like the the animatronic penguins. I think the ones where they were like. The ones that are just kind of milling about, some of them were king penguins because they spent. They, I know, yeah, I remember they, they, they spent like a ton of money on keeping the penguins like refrigerated and fed. And <laughs> this is a great conversation. <laughs> it's true. Keeping them refrigerated. Well, because they had to. They I had get to, it. Like, I get it. They had to like good. have a whole like thing for them, and they had to give them a bunch of fresh fish every day. And so people were like, "This is not worth it." But <laughs> oh, it was. It fucking was. Man. Penguins got a, Shrek in that bird cage underwater in his in his aqua den. Yeah. Uh, the monkey comes back and he's like, "Where are the children?" And he hands him a note, handwritten from Batman. It's like, "Sorry, the children won't be able to join you." And he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. "Um." Then uh, the penguins make it to downtown. They're gonna blow shit up. Mm. Alfred's back at HQ. He jams their c- signal and sends them back home to the aqua park. Batman is in the bat boat and he's racing to the zoo's aqua park. And we have that woman with the dog who's going, Something is coming. Very long. She's not excited at all. Like they're about to, you know, I I have to imagine she was excited for the idea of what she signed Killing up kids? for, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, not the kids. Because like this is past that now. Now they're they're well, what she signed up for was killing the kids, right? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, do I digress on what the plane was here? You know what I mean? Anyways, I do love I do love that the UI on Batman's radar though shows like a little duck icon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah, he gets there. Too. Yeah, first off, everybody turns on Penguin. The woman who doesn't say anything like fades into the darkness. Everybody kind of abandons him. He's like, "Fuck the jigs up." He gets in his duck to leave. Uh, Batman's got him on the radar. He intercepts the duck and knocks him down. Batman gets out. Uh, Penguins pops up. Like, I'm fucking pissed off on the Penguin. He's got like a knife as if that's gonna stop Batman. And you're the Penguin. Uh, he comes at him though with the umbrella knife, swings it around, breaks it. Uh, Batman then pulls up his little red button. He's like, what the fuck is that? He looks around and penguins are everywhere. He's like, oh, you fucking bastard. And so he gets over there and he gets the box, even though that's what Batman wanted. And he picks it up and he's like, ah, and he hits the button and the penguins missiles all start launching on the zoo itself and blowing up all over the fucking zoo. Uh, it also set, sent bats out, right? That meant the, the penguin got scared. He went, he fell through glass all the way down into the water again. And Where Batman stays is for the just, next 10 minutes. Batman's just looking up like this the entire time. Just like this. Uh, meanwhile, on the inside, Max Shrek had convinced the monkey to get him the keys. That got him out. When he started to get out, Selena Kyle whipped his leg, yanked him into the water, pulled him up by this giant electrical hazard. And so she's there saying, I'm going to kill you, life for life, yada, yada, yada. Batman sees this. He does the old bat uh, grappling gun, comes down on his line, arms out, cool visual. He lands there, starts trying to talk Selena down on not doing this. Like, why would you kill him? Like, this, that, and the other. Uh, and he's like, no, like, we can just take him to the police and they'll try him and we can go home. And she's like, that's not how it works for people like this. You know it. Like, and he's like, no, I don't. I do know it. I know our lives better than anybody. It's you and me. We split right down the center. And he does the cool thing where he pulls off his mask, right? He calls her Selena. Uh, Shrek sees it. He's like, oh. He pu- pulls off his I mask. I hate the mask pulling off scene. And I hate it for one reason. Just for the right black why. eye paint, yeah. The black, the eye, black paint. eye paint. If there's one cut where they cut back to him and there's no black eye paint and it looks so bad, and then he rips it off. I'm like, why wouldn't you just have him rip it off? Do do two takes: one with the black eye paint, one without the black eye paint, and cut away, and then come back to him, and he's there. No one would have ever noticed. But also the the way the rubber tears away is annoying to me. I just like yeah. it, takes, it grosses me out. No, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Or just don't do the scene at all because it's really fucking weird. Just but he's trying to convince her not off. to do this. This is like crossing the line, Selena, even though you've killed many people and I've killed more. Don't do this. And she's like, no, we have to. Pulls it off. Yeah, yeah. And then we get the classic line, Nick. Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed as Batman? Because he is Batman, you moron. Was Batman. Pulls the gun, shoots Bruce in the chest. Bruce collapses. Uh, Selena then turns over to Max and is like, listen, you killed me. Batman killed me. The penguin killed me, right? That leaves six lives left. Do you have enough in there to finish me off? And he's like, let's see. Or whatever. Or, yeah, six, six yeah. seven. Well, Four, seven, five, you know what I mean? Six, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Still starts alive. shooting her extremities. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's well, he's not a good shot. He's not a good shot. But oh, she's fucking anybody? four feet away from him. <laughs> it's true. You know what I mean? Aim for the heart. Because of the wig. Sure, <laughs> sure. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> uh, but eventually, she, he's out of gun or bullets. She gets there, wraps him up, wraps him around the electrical thing, and then makes out with him while zapping him with the stun gun, which seems like overkill, but it, fi- it fries him, man. It also seems like that would kill her. 
but I guess she well, has this one is her last life. Or yeah, this is the life she has to spare, right? So you guys read uh, that as like literal? Yeah, I mean, I think by the fact that she survived being electrocuted kind of shows yeah. it was literal at this point. Yeah. I just assume um, she didn't actually kiss him and just put the thing up to his face. Maybe, maybe you see his I don't face know. after this. Yeah, I just Anyways, assume she turkey. because she's wearing pleather that's like a plastic. It didn't conduct the. Oh, very smart. <laughs> I don't know that. Don't that uh, she wakes or no, she, uh, Bruce wakes up. He goes over there. He pulls the shit off. He finds Max Scorch corpse but no selena kyle meanwhile the penguin is risen from the water as well he's gushing the black and green shit out of his mouth uh he comes over to confront batman in his final thing he's like ah, he can barely talk or whatever he reaches in grabs an umbrella opens it to attack him and it's the cute one kevin what's he say shit i picked the cute shit i picked the cute one thank you Nick. nailed it uh he then collapses face down on the ramp and then all of his penguins sensing he is dead push him in they walk him out in a few in a few they don't touch him do they, they, don't they? Touch him. their little flippers touch him their little flippers touch him no i don't i'm not sure there's any physical contact these yeah. six little fucking flippers. penguins walk He's next to him sliding and then he just starts sliding and it's like what the fuck do they have force powers like this yeah. is so weird the man penguin powers, penguins. Penguin powers yeah magic mm. penguins mm. if i had a nickel uh we had a shot of him dead in the water with his the goose coming out of him uh and that's that's it for all the villains right uh from here now we're in the wayne uh car where alfred's driving bruce wayne around gotham streets as the snow falls on uh christmas time and bruce thinks he sees catwoman down an alleyway or shadow at least jumps out runs down there it is in fact just a black cat he finds he picks it up walks it back gets in the car looks sad and you know uh, alfred's like hey man this all sucked but you know merry christmas and he's like merry christmas to you alfred and goodwill towards men and he looks at the cat and women <laughs> wow! So you know, oh, I thought credits. You were cats. <laughs> no, no, no! And now, before the credits, we then yeah pan out. And we go through the rooftops to where boom, the bat signal is done, and Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman head comes up, and then it's credits. Can't yeah. wait. Bruce, in the Bruce, next movie. Bruce Wayne fixed sexism, man. It's crazy. Great, <laughs> dude. Batman, Batman returned. He did it. <laughs> Give me some haiku in review, Andy. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. Mm -hmm. Patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like Engine 25 did. I need the hookup so that I can form an army of missile penguins. Yeah. I fucking love the penguin army, man. That's about maybe the best thing I've seen in a movie ever in my entire life. Uh, Grant Burton says, the Batman is back. And he's donning a new cow. That penguin is foul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the final one here is Andrew Feisner says, well, my name is Chip. And then I'm here to say, dad, go save yourself. Dad, go save yourself. Dad, go save yourself. <laughs> I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I love it work. because after that, he put insert bad walking impression. So you nailed it. Good job, he, Nick. He knows it. Like it. Doc, come on, he knew. <laughs> he knew. So good. So good. Uh, what do we got left here, Greg? <laughs> God, Whatever you want lights. it to be. We did the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we did the songs. Finest. Hit me with the, yeah, hit me with the songs. There, the wasn't, song. a, there wasn't a song there. No, no. I think song. we just put it all in a ragu bag, didn't we? Like yeah. a podcast within a podcast. Ragu. Greg, really quick though, I will tell you exactly what happened. You said, Andy, hit me with a song for Gotham's finest, the something delight, and I just broke out into laughter, and we just went on with it. This is so weird. <laughs> What's Secret up, everybody? Delight. Welcome to welcome to welcome to welcome all the podcasts within a podcast within a podcast you love. I'm one of your hosts, Greg, alongside the crew, Kevin, Andy, Nick, and Tim. Uh, is there a secret delight? Is there a Gotham's finest for Batman Returns? I mean, of course, the definition of Gotham's finest is a secret secret delight. And number secret one delight definition, of course, is hey, something you didn't expect to like in this movie. Like in number the right now, in number one is uh, sixty six. Uh, Joey and Gia thought Catwoman's Russian costume and Adam West's small nipples were great. And now, then in number the two, thing. the secret delight was Prince's soundtrack eighty nine. Yeah, for Secret Delights, it's not ranking. It's just I know, shouting. I know, I know, no, no, I didn't mean it. Okay, I didn't yeah, mean it order. Yeah. I just meant it gotcha, like the, gotcha. the things that have happened so far. I mean, I mean it I, sounds like the Penguin Army is what Tim loves. I, I'm going sure. with the Penguin Army, man, 100%. dude. Like, what a what a moment! And like, that's in a movie that has Catwoman, which I guess there's no secret there. Warner Brothers had to constantly submit new Catwoman posters for various cities, as many of the bus stop ads were being stolen. It got so bad that police officers had to patrol bus stops in order to catch perpetrators before they could break the plexiglass containers. Today, the, the large scale Catwoman bus ads are worth a great deal of money. Wow. That's awesome. 
There's a lot of horny people out there. But no, nah, dude, these fucking that. penguins. That fact. All right. I guess then the secret delight for this one's Penguin Army. That's Hell good enough yeah. for me. Put it on there. Uh, we have Best Batmobile, which I don't think we need to update, right? 89 Batmobiles, this Batmobile. Same one. Yeah, they didn't really yeah. redesign it. We yeah, but this one, like, turning into the weird, like, Bat one-third Dildo. Batmobile, yeah. I say that firmly puts the 89 one above this one because that was not good. I wonder if they saw that one. Like, it, we, what if it was, like, a motorcycle and someone's like, no, nah, that'd be dumb. It looked like a luge. I feel like it must have, as soon as it f- went, like, it, the wheels on the side have to have come out. Otherwise, there's no way that vehicle could make a turn. You know? Well, it had the little... Well, no, it's just a straight shot back to Wayne Manor from there. He never had a turn. <laughs> <laughs> just one straight line. <laughs> That's why that, that one little alleyway that, by the way, was just in the middle. There's just a building in the middle of a street. That I was like, I never understood why they just built that like that. It was the dumbest thing ever. We've already covered the best bat suit is now Batman Returns with 89 Batman and the 66 bat suit behind it. But then we come to Ragu Bagu, a.k.a. Ragu Roga, <laughs> the Rogues Gallery, ranking that. Number one right now is 89 Batman's Joker. Number two is 66 Catwoman, Riddler, Joker, and Penguin. Where do we want to put Max Shrek, Penguin, and Catwoman, guys? I'll put him number one. I just say number two. I say number two as well. I just think it was so fun to watch the Joker the entire time come off. And then I think it was just much more of a focused story. And when we were with him, it's just he's bananas. And Jack Nicholson just did did such a great job of like having those just anything goes moments. And this is no disrespect to Danny DeVito and and Walken and Michelle Pfeiffer. I think they did a great job. But man, I mean, Jack Nicholson as as the Joker is like almost a role that he was born to play. Yeah, Jack Nicholson was so enjoyable, I think, as Joker. I would, I, I vote the same way. I would put, um, yeah, I would put Jack Nicholson's Joker as number one. Danny DeVito was born to play Penguin, and he absolutely he was great killed too. it. Yeah, and Catwoman like was just... so good in this movie. They committed so hard to what she is. And I'd Matt, Max Shrek to this, who is just like a genuinely unsettling dude. And it's Christopher Walken, who's fucking awesome. I, I feel like that they're just not very, like, they're just absurd characters that make no sense. The Joker's gang, man. Come on. They're all awesome. Bob Gunn. Gang. I don't get Bob what's wrong with horrible. this How many times does Kevin have to tell you if you started going crazy, he would follow you and be your gang? Like it's, it's, You it's, know it's, that. It's, you know that. You know that. It, come on, Tim. You sound ridiculous. I know that. That doesn't rank high on a Batman villains list. <laughs> And then, all right, then we got Ragu Bat Guys, where we're ranking Bat Guys. We, if we already put the Batmobile on here, I guess we have to put Michael Keaton uh, here as well. Number one is Michael Keaton, 89. Number two is Adam West, 66. Where do you want to put Batman Returns, Keaton? Um, I would put it at number two. I, I put it at number one. I think his fights in this were way better, and he didn't fall. I thought he, really I liked nice. that he was, he was crazier in uh, Batman, 89. Yeah, I, like, I just like him in Batman 89 more because I, I just feel like the, the line between Batman and Bruce Wayne was a little bit better, a little bit more clear. Mm-hmm. And I think he's a little bit more um, ominous and in the shadows. And in this one, it's not his fault necessarily, but the, where he's just kind of always well lit. Everything's just so well lit. There's no smoke. There's no mystery. And why? You have the whole point of Batman is he's supposed to be coming in and out of the shadows and using that. And I think Kate Keaton just did a great job with it in the first one. And in this one, he was just like, I'm in the suit. You got me for 15 minutes. What do you want? And there also just wasn't enough of him. Here's the thing. I'm going to say the uh, the zipper, it made things too easy for him. You know, too easy. He He had to hold his pee in the last one. This time. And finally, Ragu Alf Alf. (laughs) We rank the Alfreds of the Batman. You get I'm already tired, man. (laughs) Number one, 89. Michael Goff. Number two, 66. Alfred. Uh, Where do we want to put Batman Returns? I feel like number one, one man. Last. What? No, he actually like did something in this one that wasn't just be, do make excuse bad decisions, me, like letting me, Vicky into the Batcave. First of all, they had a relationship that. of up to maybe even more than a week. We don't know. They don't clarify that. All right. And then the 66 Batman put on the little uh, raccoon masks yeah, and yeah, like went yeah. around driving and doing stuff. We barely saw this one. No, thank you. Last place for me. I like this he, one because he jammed the frequency. He helped use the CD to bring down Penguin. At no point uh, did the jamming the frequency do it. Yeah, he, had like, he, he probably pressed the button. Who are the presents for? Orphans. I liked that more yeah, heart to heart moment in '89 when they're together at the yeah. at the dinner the table. table. Yeah. I just feel like he wasn't. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I feel like he was almost just like a gadget he <laughs> he was just almost like a bat gadget in this movie where he was he did the jobs and just wasn't really present otherwise except for thinking of a dirty limerick I which put him we in never a, heard 
So you're putting him number two. Number two was like... a cat from Nantucket. Shit, That's how that started off. How's it end? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> Tim, back to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it's time to rank the Batman movies. Currently, number one is Batman '89, and number two is Batman '66. I don't think it's a surprise. I think this is number one by a large, large margin. I, I think nostalgia is blinding you guys. I just feel uh, like this movie is 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 fun. There's a campiness. There's a violence to it. But I just, again, mirroring what I said at the beginning, I just don't think they do anything particularly new with this other than just add more characters, which, again, adds to the fun factor. But with 89, to me, that was just such a new and beautiful and amazing thing. And I just think it worked so well. I, I liked the more focused triangle between him, Vicky Vale, and the Joker a lot more than this, which just seems like they're splitting a lot of time between these villains that don't really have... I mean, the motivations are always just kind of just cookie cutter. We want to destroy everything because we're bad guys. And that's so not true at all. Penguin's mad because he was a little kid that got taken away from having a real life. And Catwoman is like legitimately insane because she was almost killed. Like, I don't know how much more motivation you need than Joker, who was like legitimately just a bad guy. That's fair, I guess. Um, I just, I just, I don't know. I just didn't, I never, I never found penguins particularly compelling just because. He's had 32 years to, to, to rectify that, and he's just been a bad guy, and then he just wants to do something bad just to punish. For me, it, it's Gotham funny you bring up nostalgia you know? blinding us because I feel like coming in, I would have been like, oh, Batman Returns is better than 89. But here I am, and I, I'm voting uh, at number two with 89 above it because I think that I just enjoyed that picture and that story as a complete package more than this one. Yeah. Uh, if, and that's for a, a number of different things, but I enjoyed the – Batman focus. I enjoyed the Joker as the villain, and I enjoyed the Vicky Vale stuff more. Whereas here, I think it is this: the we get so little of Batman Bruce in this movie in a way that I I felt compelled with. And I like Devito obviously, and I like uh, Pfeiffer obviously, and I liked what they did with the characters. But I think overall, like having to put that much into it, along with Shrek on top of it, actually detracts from it being a start to finish. I'm in it for the entire ride. I'm, I'm enjoying it on the same level. I totally agree. I, nostalgia is like not a factor with me at all because I just don't remember them at all. I thought this movie was going to be a banger, and I just didn't really feel that way at the end of the movie. Um, I enjoyed 89 uh, a lot more than I thought I would, and this one I was uh, a little bit disappointed. But I, although I still think DeVito killed it, I think he was entertaining to watch, but so was Jack Nicholson for me. So I, I would put this at number two below Batman 89. Yeah, I was uh, surprised last week that uh, Paula enjoyed the 89 one, which I, I didn't remember as much. But, like, yeah, re-watching it, I, I thought overall it was a good movie. But then when I was re-watching uh, Returns, it's just, it was too campy, and uh, it was late, and Paula at one point was like, hey, I gotta go to bed. And she didn't care to finish it, and, like, that, that kind of, makes sense to me where it's just it's so campy and ridiculous that it kind of like loses your attention in my opinion so yeah that's i'd also put it as uh, the second so number one we got batman 89 number two we have batman returns and number three we have batman 1966 next week we're doing batman mask of the phantasm oh, oh, oh. let's fucking go How, have you guys actually seen this has everyone seen this yeah. Uh, again, I haven't seen this movie in 25 years, probably. <laughs> oh, I'm, ex- I'm excited to go back and watch it. It's been a minute for me. Is too. this connected to the animated show? Mm-hmm. Should it's I the watch style. all that? I think yeah, if I the whole now, animated I show. You should watch that, Justice League, and the Superman I've, uh, I've animated show as well. Many times Thank cool. you. Yeah. Until next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs>